Riptide, 11 a.m. local kickoff, and this Alabama squad, they have not been without adversity this season, Coach. A couple of heartbreaking losses, but then with their backs against the wall, last week at Ole Miss, a fourth quarter comeback. They win the game, a gut check victory, and they hope that win can transform the momentum this week and beyond. Winning in the fourth quarter is really special, Mike. And what you have to do to win in the fourth quarter is be sound and disciplined. This football team has it. And then you get to go Alabama dance in the locker room, have a good time. I'm not sure if Coach Saban danced in the locker room, but I'll tell you what, they, they take that momentum here against Austin P. then it'll allow, catapult them to the Auburn game. Mike, he's generational. This young man can see the football field. He can throw. He can run. He's got great vision, okay? And the best part about this young man is Coach O'Brien just loves this kid. He said he's a better young man than he is a football player. Well, for more on this opponent, Austin P, a chance to make it to the FCS playoffs. And for more on the squad, Lauren Sisler on the sideline. Lauren, how are you? Hey guys, what's going on? You know, Austin P has a great case for an FCS playoff bid, and they are so anxious for Selection Sunday tomorrow, but even more anxious to play this football game here in this atmosphere in Brian Denny Stadium against Alabama. And head coach Scotty Walden said, look, I'm 33 years old. I get to coach against one of the best coaches of all time and Nick Saban, and we get to compete against one of the best teams in the country, our team and our culture versus theirs. This game matters. We came to win. It's about showcasing our brand. Time to go cut it loose. Scotty Walden, one of the youngest coaches in all of college football. When he was hired at age 30, he was the youngest, now 33, and he's pumped up. Yeah, they got nothing to lose. I mean, they got absolutely nothing to lose in this ball game, and they'll find out their fate tomorrow, whether or not the Governors get to the FCS playoffs. Nick Saban, when we sat down and chatted with him yesterday, much more reserved. He talked about this has been one of the most challenging seasons for him in terms of psychologically battling a lot of different things. Two tough losses by a combined four points. All the other things that go along with today's version of college football, NIL, and everything of the sort. He knows the importance of finishing this season strong. Austin P will Kick it off to Alabama and a delayed take out of the end zone by Emmanuel Henderson. That was a curious decision. That'll take it to the eight-yard line. And our first look at Bryce Young in this Alabama offense, which, by the way, is averaging 40 and a half points per game. That's the second highest total in the SEC, sixth highest in all of college football. And again, the numbers are not the eye-popping, record-breaking ones that he had a year ago. However, he has still been remarkably efficient. He has had what would be labeled Heisman-type moments this year. They call him Houdini because of the magic X that he pulls on the field, and he'll try to pull through the final couple weeks of the regular season and then beyond as Alabama still very much in range of some high-level postseason goals. They'll test the ground game on first down. It'll be Jace McClellan. We do not expect to see Jameer Gibbs today. Jameer Gibbs nursing an ankle. They think he'll be back for the Iron Bowl next week. So here's McClellan, 84 yards last week in that victory against the Rebels. On second down, it'll be Bryce Young out of the shotgun. What they're doing, Mike, is they're playing cat and mouse already, looking over for calls, changing calls. Interesting cat and mouse game going on today. A three-man rush. Young settles in the pocket. Deep shot down the middle. Has a man leaping catch, and then it squirts out. Ja'Cory Brooks, their best playmaker at the wideout spot this year, could not hold on. Sound solid pocket there, lets it fly. Accurate football over the top shoulder. He's got to bring that in there. He, the defensive back did a great job of stripping him with his left hand there at the end. And the Sedarius Doss on the coverage for the Governors who hail from the Atlantic Sun Conference. And again, they hope that they will make it back to the FCS playoffs with a 7-3 record on the season, hovering just outside the top 25. 
Now a third down conversion opportunity with Young from the pocket. Missiles one complete at the 24. And first down yardage, the scamper after the catch by Jermaine Burton, the former Georgia Bulldog, a gain of 14. Little third down route here, call it a sticks route. He comes in here, he hooks right in over right on top of the sticks. Now you see they're coming out here with Temple all of a sudden. And they will get ready in a hurry with trips to the top of your screen. Young flares it out with a penalty flag on the field. JoJo Earl with the catch. He turns it upfield at the 31, but we'll see what the laundry is all about. It was an unbalanced set there, Mike, and I think the tight end wasn't completely on the football. They're going to have too many guys in the backfield, in my opinion. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. First down. Nahe Black didn't get all the way set on that line of scrimmage there for him before they uh, snapped that football. Well, what did Nick Saban tell us yesterday? The two things that have been the most frustrating for him, they're not getting takeaways on defense and too many penalties on both sides of the football. They are leading the SEC in penalties. That's very un like On first and 15. Getting to the edge and the outside. Chapman on the tackle of Jace McClellan. Coach O'Brien there comes. He comes back to that unbalanced set there. He ran that old Packer sweep with the two double guards pulling over into the short side of the football field. He wants to get back on track here now, make it a second and ten. Raydale Williams checks into the game. The junior out of Hueytown, Alabama. He's the back on a second down and ten with Young out of the shotgun. Little. Weak side blitz and a big play on the outside. Down the far sideline of the 40-yard line. That is Williams with Josh Rudolph on the tackle. What they're doing here is they, they brought that blitz from the field and they didn't rotate the safety down into the boundary. And Williams takes it and bursts up field. That young man has great vision and explosiveness. Oh, a methodical opening drive on first and ten. And a big hole right side and streaking down the sideline past the 40 and out of bounds near the 35. That is Jace McClellan. Remember, it was McClellan last year who had the ACL injury, worked his way back. He's healthy, and he's a tough guy to bring down. He is. He's an explosive runner, really good vision there. You see what Coach O'Brien's doing here. He's giving him multiple formation. He's a dirty dozen guy. He's got him stripped. He wants to see what formations he has on the field and how they're going to defend them. And in that last one over there, they had him onto the boundary. So after a 32-yard gain, timeout by the Governors. No score early on. Well, you're looking at number one in Crimson, Jameer Gibbs, the former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket. What a key transfer he's been. The number one rusher leads him in receiving with 40 grabs on the year. Nothing overly serious, we were told by the coaching staff yesterday. An ankle sprain. They hope to have him back full strength next week for the Iron Bowl back here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. But don't expect to see him here today. A good look at a very deep running back stable for the Crimson Tide without him. On first down, Young with time, great protection up front. Steps up. I mean, he's got all day to survey. Nobody open. Now goes across the field, back to the 20, and completes it to Ja'Cory Brooks, and that'll be a first down, a gain of 14. Doss on the stop for the Gubs. So we, talk, we talked earlier in the open about the, op the opening, about his vision. He has unbelievable protection here. He's the kind of guy who wants to scramble to throw, not run. Now the eighth play of the opening drive. And they'll run it between the tackles. That's McClellan. Popped and dropped after a gain of three. And we say hello to Lauren Sisler. Yeah, guys, Jace McClellan has really had to practice a lot of patience. Mike, you mentioned the ACL injuries, had to go through the injuries. He also had to sit and wait his turn. He backed up Brian Robinson a year ago. Then Jameer Gibbs comes in. That's tough for a guy who really wants to get that playing time. But he's really stepped up. He plays tough. He plays physical. And we saw a lot of that last week against Ole Miss. Certainly did, Lauren. And you talk to the coaching staff. What has impressed them most is his attitude throughout all that. Young with time. Missiles one. In the boundary and out around the 10 yard line. First down yardage for JoJo Earl, the sophomore out of Alito, Texas. Good for seven yards. You know, it's going to be a double edged sword here because if they blitz, they're getting 
hurt on the run, and when they sit back and they're playing a drop eight type of coverage there, he has a lot of time on there. It's a very methodical drive here by Bill O'Brien, his offense, and Bryce is really mastering the calls here. Tenth play of the drive on first and goal with McClellan behind Young. Feeds him. Probes the right side. Stacked up, though, near the line of scrimmage. Good job bottling him up by that front line of Austin P. What they did there is they're trying to shrink the field. They put what we call FSL, formation into the sideline. They put two big tight ends, a receiver in the boundary over there, and ran the stretch play over there. And this time, versus the last time, that safety did drop down and give him an extra hat there in the box. Of course, Alabama's offense led by Bill O'Brien, the former head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Averaging 40 and a half points per game. There's a look at Coach O'Brien in the booth. Good chat with him yesterday. Young out of the shotgun on second down and goal. 11th play of this opening drive. Gets the snap. Has time from the pocket. Rifles one over the middle. And incomplete. Intended for one of the talented freshman wideouts we'll see today. That's Kendrick Law, the freshman from Shreveport, Louisiana. Good pocket again. Dropping eight people, throws it in the middle, comes over, strips the ball really well. They got to really do a good job there. Kendrick Law has to watch that ball. I always tell people, catch the ball with your eyes. Has to look that into his hands there. That, that is going to be something to look for today. We'll see a lot of those freshman wide receivers, the wideouts of the future for Alabama in this game today. Now third and goal. Watch the mesh routes here with the receivers crossing here with the man-to-man -man coverage. Young, again, all day, I mean, just standing in the pocket. He can file his taxes if he wants to. Now going to tuck it and run, and Young will take a shot at the one-yard line, and the Governors stop him short of the goal line. A seven-yard run, but it was Corey Chapman and Josh Rudolph meeting Bryce Young. They're setting the tone here. They're going for it on fourth down. Coach, what do you do if you're Austin P to get any pressure at this point? Well, you have it's a double-edged sword, Mike. They got to either blitz them yeah. to get the extra guy coming under pressure, which makes you vulnerable on the back end. They'll open up with an eye formation. Here comes ISO right downhill for these guys. <laughs> and Austin P. Hey, you get three timeouts in the first half. They use Time their out. second here in the Austin first quarter. Their second of the half. That's 30 seconds in length. That's in, really interesting to me, Mike, that they've already burnt their first two timeouts. Now, I, I agree with you. Don't can't take them in the locker with them and get them on the second half. I understand that concept. However, from the very first drive of the football game, which is a, a meticulous drive here by Alabama, they're already using their two timeouts. What they're going to do now, in my opinion, is they're going to come out with their big people, 13 personnel, and run right downhill at them because of the size advantage of Alabama's offensive line versus the defensive line of Austin P. Oh, there's head coach Scotty Walden. I mean, I, I love his attitude going into this game. He says, look, I'm going to tell my kids I coached against Nick Saban. We're going to go ahead and have some fun out there. I'm going to use the Gene Hackman, Norman Dale Hoosiers line. This, the field is still 100 yards long, 53 wide at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Let's go out there and try and pull off the miracle today. Little post 10 feet high, right? That's right. Extra tight end is Robbie Oots. Again, Williams dots the eye, gets the carry, dives forward and gets into the end zone. Touchdown Alabama on an impressive opening drive. 13 plays. Well, I think a couple young men from Austin P are disheartened because they thought they stopped them. Touchdown. Yeah, no question. On every scoring play, of course, it'll get another look, and we'll make sure that Alabama's in the end zone. The rolling on the field of a touchdown is under video review. That's really good that they're going to go to video review on this situation here. It's going to be interesting to see here. Let's take a look at McClellan here and make sure he gets in. I would think from that angle, it looks like he's got the plane with the nose of the football. That's all you need. 
It does. I got to tell the truth here, though. I got to be transparent. Yes. I'm not really good at these calls. <laughs> I seem like I always get them wrong. Who is? I seem like I always get them wrong, but I, I can't see the football perfectly there. This might be a little bit better for my eyes. They're coming downhill here. It did look like the ball hit that white line. That's all we have to do. But the official's rear end just got in my way, yeah, so I, was, I can't see that either. <laughs> definitely not going to make much out of that angle. I think the first angle was the most telling one. It was. This one will be tough to see as well. You always need that kind of that side view. When you have all those bodies piling up, sometimes it's nearly impossible. But I thought from this angle here, right there, I think he's in. I think the nose of the football is over the plane. It does, and it's a little bit hard to see because the young man's doing a great job of locking the football away. And the official saw it. He had a really good eye right down that line there. I think it did hit that white line there. However, on the flip side of it, that was a beautiful run fit by Austin P. Yeah. And a gallon effort. Give them credit. By the way, if it holds up, that'll be the fourth rushing touchdown of the season for Jace McClellan. And it would have to be indisputable video evidence to overturn this ruling, which is the touchdown. I don't see how they overrule it. After video review, the ruling on touchdown stands. Well, there you go, a 13-play, 92-yard opening drive for Alabama and the Crimson Tide will try to make it 7-0 with the extra point. Will Reichard, a perfect 47 for 47 on extra points. The all-time leading scorer in Alabama history. He's had a sensational career, the senior out of Hoover High School. Snap and kick are true, and the kick is right down Broadway. 8.28 to go, opening quarter. Alabama caps it off with a little goal line rush for the score. 7-0 Crimson Tide. They've been the standard in the Nick Saban era. Seven playoff berth appearances in the eight years that we've had it. Six national championship game appearances. And, of course, three national championships, not to mention six overall under the direction of head coach Nick Saban. Now this year you lose two games by a combined four points, and you're behind the eight ball. They're not mathematically eliminated by any stretch, but it's going to take a lot of chaos for Alabama to sneak through. That said, Coach, I mean, you got the Iron Bowl next week. No need for extra motivation there. That speaks for itself. And you still got a chance to, at bare minimum to play in a New Year's Day game. Maybe the Sugar Bowl, the Orange Bowl, all at stake in these final two weeks for the Crimson Tide. As the return by Cam Thomas. He's one of several players from the state of Alabama on this Austin P squad. I agree with you. What they have to play for. New Year's, New Year's Six bowl games are special, man. Mm -hmm. They're a lot of fun, a lot of energy there and stuff. So they still do have a lot to play for. And they'll get, they get through this game. They got to win this one. And then they got to take their business next week. Yeah, win the next two and look good doing it is what Nick Saban wants. Is we take a look at a guy who's looked good all year long for Austin P. Mike DeLillo is the starting quarterback number 12. He's out of Pembroke Prines, Florida. He started his career at Florida Tech. And Florida Tech, after COVID, shut down the program. They'll go to the perimeter on first down, and that is stacked up for a loss. That's their top target, Dre McCray, but immediately brought down by Henry To'o To'o. Here comes the speed Coach was talking about here. Get set fast, snap the ball, let's go. They want to snap it no deeper in the play clock than 12 seconds in. Oh, how about a double pass? Deep down, he's got a man wide open and the ball was overthrown. Oh, goodness, Trey Goodman got, I beg your pardon, McCray got behind the secondary. Trey Goodman threw the pass, and if this pass has got more on it, it might be six. 
He does. They threw it behind the line of scrimmage. He's got to get a little more juice in that ball up over top. Well-designed trickeration right out of the blocks. We talked to Coach about trickeration in the meeting. He was very elusive. Yes, he was. When he gave me that answer. But I think it's safe to say anything goes today. And that call was right on target. The execution not there, however, sets up a third down at 11. Tied rushing four. Delillo, Coxon fires a deep ball. Again, he's got a man open. Oh, it's two different times that a governor's receiver beat the secondary. This time it's Kellen Stewart. One ball was underthrown. That ball is overthrown. Lanier Sampson is the wide receiver coach, and he likes his receivers' juice. They can run. This young man, Kellen Stewart, he's a 21-3, 200 meters guy, and he got up on top. Few jitters early there, Mike, with the quarterback overthrowing his routes. Yeah, and maybe some jitters in the Alabama secondary. That's two breakdowns on the opening drive. Both could have gone for six. Here's the punt by Rigney. It'll take a hop at the 37. And now Austin P is saying it touched the Alabama return man, and it did. It's going to be a turnover, and it's going to be Governor's football. Myers recovered it for the Governor's. A 35-yard punt, a muff, and a recovery for Austin P. That's two special teams discipline really things here. The receiving team touched the ball, and the kicking team recovered. First down, Austin P. Oh, it hits a 19. Kendrick Law never saw it. Kind of got him from behind. Hit him on the back. He did not see that. So that was not really a lack of discipline. That was a structure of bad luck. Good got, luck for Austin Pay. I mean, it hits him in the right side of the helmet, Coach. Oh, that's not using your head, is it? That, not the right way. Correct. So great field position to start this drive from the Bama 36 with time and a comeback route caught at the 30-yard line. That is Dre McCray. And McCray out of Tallahassee, a young man, he was a standout performer last year when they took on Ole Miss. This young man's a really good receiver here. They're going quick on you already. Going Second down, down going in zone. And good coverage on the play. McCray step for step. Kool-Aid McKinstry, who we had a chance to chat with yesterday. He's confident. He always wants to cover their best receiver. That's what he's doing today. Kool-Aid. Asked him how he got that name. Told me about his favorite drink. I'm so old, I thought they only had three flavors. Oh, man. Yeah. They've, they've Strawberry, expanded. pink, lemon. <laughs> yeah, they've expanded the brand. Grandma gave him that nickname when he was born, so he came out of the womb smiling like the Kool-Aid mascot. Here's third and three. Bama dials up a blitz on the run and throwing on target complete. That's McCray on the grab and a good-looking throw from DeLillo, who again... Two stops for DeLillo, Florida Tech, and then Middle Tennessee. Good-looking quarterback, gain of seven. What they're trying to do is create leverage problems for McCray. Off the ball, in motion. In that situation there, he's off the ball, trailed and ran an out route. Looked like a natural pick versus man-to-man -man coverage there. Evans in the backfield on first down. From the 22 of Alabama. You see they split those wideouts, much like Tennessee, outside the numbers at the top of your screen. And they'll throw a quick slant, caught, and down to the 15-yard line. That is Kellen Stewart with Branch on the tackle, but not before a pickup of seven. Back again to high percentage throws. Talking to Coach this week, he thinks that's like a run. Right. You know, as a defensive coordinator, I don't think that's a run, but short precision throws here. Got quads over to the field here. And quads to the near side. And instead, a little pitch play to the far side, and they'll pick up positive yardage. That's C.J. Evans, a junior from Mobile. Evans is the guy, if you remember, the first game back from COVID. Austin P. played in that game, and Evans had a 75-yard touchdown run. Picks up seven on this play and sets up a first and goal. Little mesh point handoff, second effort, burrowing his way to the three. C.J. Evans, tough yardage for the 5'7", 177-pound tailback. DeMarco Hellams on the stop. Second and goal, fast tempo, quick snap. This time the quarterback, Dalillo, will keep it, and he'll surge ahead to the two-yard line. On the tackle, Will Anderson, Will Anderson, 
Another All-American season for the Crimson Tide, number one in the league in tackles for loss. Mike, Will Anderson is big time. He's going to be a first-round draft pick. Oh, yeah. He's long, he's powerful, he's athletic. Man's really good there. And a super young man in the coaching staff highlights the fact that throughout all this season and throughout some of the adversity, he's been the best leader this team has had, plays with so much pride. They'll need some pride here. It's the third and goal, and you have to think Austin P might be thinking four down territory. Evans to back to Lillo will keep, and he's popped and dropped for a loss. The middle was not open for business, clogged up well by the freshman Jaheim Otis. Interesting call going up the middle because of the size disadvantage that Austin P has versus Alabama's front. They're going for it on fourth down here. I would expect some type of mesh routes to pick their man coverage down here. Okay, if I was them, I'd take the points to have a heck of a drive coming right. down the football field and make it a 7-3 game here. They will go from the three on fourth down. Little jump pass and that goes nowhere. DeLillo was trying to find Jordan Goko, the tight end, but that play was not even close in the drive stalls. So Austin P gets a gift, unable to cash in. Alabama still leading at 7 nothing. Pass incomplete. Alabama ready that time in coverage. Alden was fired up after that last play. He really thought there should have been a holding penalty called. And getting another look here, Coach, <laughs> he might be right. I think he is right. I think he is right. I'm not sure he's going to get that call down in the uh, red zone. However, I think he was completely right, and that young man was held. No, Alabama will start at their own three-yard line. Young Coxon fires, completes in the flat to the eight-yard line. That's Kendrick Law, the freshman wideout. Simmons on the tackle. Hey, here's what we want to see on this right here, right there. He holds them, grabs them, and then he hooks them back with his left hand. Definitely justifiable by Coach's reaction on the sideline there. Now Austin P unable to catch a break on the call. They did catch a break on the muffed punt return, but did not get any points out of the deal. Second and seven for the tie. Back to the ground game between the tackles. Second effort bursting past the 15 and staggering down to the 18-yard line is Jace McClellan. Already a touchdown in his back pocket. Very patient runner. Look at that vision he has, and a little jump cut, I call it. He's coming down in that B gap, pops back over to the A gap, and then he accelerates upfield for the first down. A 12-yard pickup for the junior. To the ground game again. Huge hole right side, breaking tackles McClellan, and McClellan will stretch it out to the 36. Doss on the stop, but a gain of 18 on the play. Again, downhill running play. They call this a split zone where the tight end comes across and kicks out, and the tailback comes off his rear end and falls it through the hole. They're just getting a little bit manhandled right now with the size. Alabama, huge size advantage on the line of scrimmage on both ends. First down carry, they'll keep it on the ground. A steady dose. This time it's Roydell Williams. Well, we've seen McClellan, we've seen Williams. We'll likely see Trey Sanders and perhaps some other backs in this game. Again, no Jameer Gibbs nursing an ankle injury. We talked to Coach the other day. I'm excited to see if they get to a freshman, uh, the Miller kid, Jamari Miller. Coach really raved about him. He's a true freshman, so it'd be fun to watch him play today. Yeah, another Texas product out of Tyler High School. Fifth play of the drive on second down. And slithering through a hole on the right, right side is Roydale Williams. That will bring up a third down and short for the tie. A gain of five. Castleberry with the tackle. I'm very impressed with this young man's vision. His vision and the way he uses his feet and quickness inside the hole is very impressive. On third and a yard. 
Hand off straight ahead and lowering the shoulder, staggering into plus territory. A gain of five for Williams. Coach O'Brien sat up there. Okay, very smart, intelligent football coach. A Brown graduate. So you know he has to be smart to go into the Ivy League, first of all. Okay? And second of all, they're taking this methodical drive, and it's all run right now. He got off his dirty dozen. He mm -hmm. said, okay, let's overpower these guys. They're doing it by the running game. And mauling Austin P on the line of scrimmage. Under a minute to go first half. Here's a little end around this time into the hands of Isaiah Bond, but that one bottled up well. Ball comes out late. Austin P says they have it. Uh, the officials say, nope, P was down. It'll be second down and long. If you're a team like Austin P, obviously you need some breaks. You need some turnovers. You already got one. The ruling on the field was the run was down prior to losing possession. Second down. It was wrestled while he was. They were wrestling, but I think his rear end hit yeah. and still had possession of that football he's, there. He's down there. It's Dimitri's forward trying to strip it out. Can't tell what's happening here. Coach wants to talk to him again. You're going to burn all three timeouts in the first quarter. You don't see that very often. No, I well, I think what he's doing, he's calling the timeout and challenging. If he wins the challenge, he'll get that back. I don't... The ruling on the field of the ball carry being down prior to losing possession is under video review. Now, I, I think this is going to hold up, but it does speak to a, a bigger issue. We'll take another look. Coming down. Nice swarming to the ball. They're coming after the ball there. Oh. Rearing hits the ground. It's closer than I thought initially. It does look closer. I believe he still has possession. He doesn't have it until right there. But, you know, one way or another, whether it holds up or not, of course, Alabama's already got one turnover in this game. Coach, they are minus six on the year. I, I, when I looked and started digesting all the stats for this game, I, that one just blew me away. And we mentioned it to Nick Saban, and he just shook his head. He said, I, I don't know what, I don't know how we got here. First thing they do every practice, they practice takeaway drills on defense, right? They're just not getting takeaways. On the season, seven total takeaways, four fumbles, and just three interceptions. That is not indicative of an Alabama defense. That is not on their defense. On the other flip side of it, they've only given the ball away 12 times, though. Mm -hmm. So that's a very positive from that standpoint. But he talked about the turnovers. We talked in depth with him about turnovers and the penalties, and those are two crucial parts, and I think that are hidden keys to the game. Now, the rear end is off the ground there. Is the ball out there? Uh, this is a lot closer that, than it looked initially. That is a lot closer. I'm not sure. It depends which way they go with it. He's, his butt still isn't on the ground. Is the ball moving is my question. I don't know. It has to be indisputable evidence, like they say. And I'm not sure. The ball looks like it might be moving a little bit, but I don't think he loses complete possession of that football. Our replay official is Ron Leatherwood, taking a long look at this one, making sure they get it right. Now, going back on my, my percentage, I'm only like 25% of getting them right here, Mike. So, <laughs> Well, we're giving but, you two <laughs> difficult ones off the bat. <laughs> you know, let, let, let's not put a lot of credence into the old ball coach up here on, on if I'm going to be right, wrong, or indifferent here. Well. I, I think this is one of the most difficult ones to call. Spotting in traffic, spotting a football like the goal line play, and then a fumble with bodies surrounding the stripping of the football. When did it come out? When did he lose control versus when he was down? This is always one of the more difficult things to yeah. finalize. You got, you got to throw out a big Hail Mary there to our, our camera guys and our producer, no Alex, question. because finding that ball moving in there. Here it goes. After video review, the runner was not down prior to losing possession. Therefore, it is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Austin P at the 48-yard line. So now Alabama is minus seven on the season in turnover margin, just to put that in perspective. The last time they finished in the red and turnover margin, you got to go back to 2014. That was minus two. You can live with minus two. Minus seven is going to drive that man crazy, and it has this season. Absolutely. 
Coach Wall, look at him. He's, giving, he's helping the officials saying, yeah, it's first down. Let's go. I told you so. Give me my timeout back. Come on. Let's go. I, I mean, good to see. If, if, they, if they get the call on the fourth down hold, who knows what we're looking at here. As it stands, it's Alabama 7 nothing. Final 27 seconds of the half. And again, great field position for the Governors. Scampering up the middle is Evans. Toe, toe on the stop after a gain of five. Ah, the stone cold jersey. Everybody's got their uh, turnover trick, if you will. That's what it looks like back in Clarksville, Tennessee. Austin P named after the former Tennessee governor in the 1920s. And that'll spell the end of quarter number one. That is the end of the first quarter. They used to always do those takeaways and get all the faith disease. We were, we were old fashioned when I was coaching. My wife just made brownies because we said they were sweet. Denny Stadium, Austin P recovering the football, the drive is alive, and just talking to them coming into this stadium yesterday, taking in all the sights and sounds, took in this feeling of being an SEC stadium, envisioning what it would be like to be in front of 100,000 fans. This is special for this football team. Playing against one of the best teams in the country, they aren't backing down, they're embracing this opportunity as a big milestone moment in their college football careers. And so far, Lauren, they have looked awfully strong. I mean, they're down 7 nothing. They've got the ball in plus territory. They forced two turnovers. Life is good if you're Scotty Walden and the governor so far in this game. Absolutely. This is second short here. I'd, I'd go for the home run right here. On third down, pump and go. Nothing there. Going to scramble. DeLillo is a great runner. Gets outside the hash, turns it upfield and down to the 35-yard line. Kool-Aid McKinstry on the stop, but an eight-yard pickup and a first. Nice job here. He wanted to go with the pump and go. It was well covered by Alabama. He tucks it. He goes, gets the first down for that team. He actually played in the bowl game last year for Middle Tennessee State, but as soon as he found out he wasn't going to be the guy, he wanted to transfer play right away, and what a gift it's been for Scotty Walden. Getting to the edge, a little shake and bake at the 35, and down to the 31-yard line is Evans, their top running back. Branch and Helms on the stop. They're staying ahead of the chains here, Mike, which is really advantageous for them, putting them in a second and medium situation here. Well, we met with the team, Austin P when they got here yesterday, and sure, they were there was a lot of goo, goo goo gaga eyes, if you will, looking around this historic stadium, but they weren't lacking confidence to say that. A little tunnel screen set up at the 30, and down near the marker for a first down is their top playmaker, Dre McCray. They do a nice job of motioning their tight end, Goko, into the boundary, and they run the bubble screen off of that. Watch for the bubble and go coming off that later in the game here. Maybe it comes right here, perhaps, on first and 10 from the 25. They'll go back to the perimeter, and the catch is made, and out of bounds to the 23 is McCray. I mentioned what they do on offense when you see these wideouts. It's very similar. Alabama fans will remember Tennessee doing it. The wideouts split out wide outside the numbers. What does that do to put stress on a defense? What it does is the stress is that you have to go out and cover them, obviously, and it lightens the box with only a five-man box. On second down, DeLillo pumps and fires, completes, and bulldozing his way out of bounds to the 10 is McCray, a gain of 13 with Arnold on the tackle. Second red zone trip today for this Austin P offense. DeLua has settled down now with his accuracy. He had those jitters in the first drive. He's settling down very nice. They'll test the middle on the ground on first down. Not much there for Evans. Will Anderson, the All-American linebacker on the tackle. You got Anderson and Young and Smith and Otis in there. That is like a wall. That is a huge wall up there for these young men to try to block no and get question. through. No question. Anderson is, again, the stats aren't quite what they were a year ago. He has still been incredibly dominating. Number one in the SEC in tackles for loss. Defends the run and pass equally well. Another long drive. The ninth play for Austin P on second down. Mesh point handoff inside the 10. Down to the seven-yard line. C.J. Evans 
the junior from Mobile, Alabama. They have 22 players on this Austin P roster from the state of Alabama, so there's a lot of extra pride going on. Absolutely. They want to come back here and say, hey, we can play with you guys. They played against them in high school. They want to come back here and play against them in college. Governors are two of four on third down. Remember, they went for it on fourth down and did not succeed. We'll see if they're thinking four down territory again if they don't get it here. It has them spread out all over the field here in their empty set. Five wide for DeLillo on third down. Looking near side, a little slant and overshot his target, but there's a penalty flag. He's going for Kellen Stewart. The pass was high, but was there a hold on Bama? That's the area of a hold. Illegal man downfield. The receiver must have had him covered up. Probably decline the penalty, make him kick it. Mm -hmm. And that's a player downfield, offense, number 10. That penalty's declined. Result of play is fourth down. When you say make them kick it, I, yeah, they will send it. Yeah, I was wondering if they were going to be that risky here the second time down. I mean, you got to take the points if you're Austin P. You don't know how many times you're going to be inside the red zone. You know, I, have, I, I sincerely apologize about this. Being a defensive coach, if he took the points before right. and now he takes these points, it's a 7-6 football yeah. game instead of 7-3, counting on that they're going to make this extra point. Trujillo's got a leg now, already hit a 55-yarder this season against Jacksonville State. I believe that Tider set a school record. This is a 25-yarder, and he shanked it. Shanked it wide. And right now, Mike, coach is over saying, I knew I should have went for it. <laughs> well, he came in on the season despite the 55-yarder. 11 of 19 on the year. Make it 11 of 20, as that one never had a chance. Looked like me off the tee box. His patience, no question, not just two heartbreaking losses, but just the overall difficulties and challenges that come with coaching in today's day and age of college football. This game is going to test his patience. This run will help him get into a better mood. Down the sideline, into plus territory. A strong run for Chase McClellan. Ford finally stops him out of bounds, but not before a gain of 35 yards. They come off the green, blitz off the corner. He gets a little hop jump here, stiff arms him, comes around. Now look at the acceleration, take up off down the sideline here. That stiff arm, Derrick Henry might have came back and taught him how to do that one, huh? <laughs> That's a new career high, by the way, for Jace McClellan. Came in, it was 99, he's over 100 already. Nothing doing that time. Corey Chapman brings down Bryce Young in the backfield. A loss of five on the play. What they did there this time, what they did this time is they came with a five, we call it a 5-5-1. Five, five, they blitz five guys off the thing. They're playing man zone coverage behind it, and they have a post player. Coach talked about that post player in case something does break, he could run it down. One of the many things that Bryce Young does well, he doesn't normally take sacks. It's only the ninth time he has been sacked. Alabama as a team, 18 times. Young five for seven, just 39 yards here in the early going. They'll go empty backfield on second and 14. Little tunnel screen set up, and not much there for JoJo Earl. Tripped up after a gain of a couple. It'll be third and long. Coach Cap has talked to us, if you remember, in our, our meetings, production meetings, they want to, on first, second downs, they want to drop eight. And why they want to do that is because they want to flood all those zones. And you see that then the end can come down flat on those screens. Starting to get an idea of why Austin P is a good candidate for the FCS playoffs. That selection show will be, will be tomorrow. They are the proverbial bubble team. Here's a third down and 13 with Williams to the right of Bryce Young. Young settles in the pocket, looks deep, now goes underneath. A little slant at around the 40-yard line, but that'll be five yards shy. JoJo Earl on the grab for seven. Josh Rudolph, nice tackle. 
They brought the tight end in on that on that play. They motioned him back in and put him on line of scrimmage so they could max protect. I thought he didn't. He had a shot there for the go route going up over top. Checked it down, but now four down territory here. Fourth. Look for crossing routes here, or they're going to sit down at the sticks. Just try to get the ball over that first down marker and keep going down the field here. Four wide set for Alabama on fourth down and five. Let's see if Coach Kappa sticks with his game plan of dropping eight here. They empty out the backfield. Young with time. Missiles one over the middle. Complete in traffic at the 20. Jermaine Burton, a first down to the 16-yard line, a 23-yard hookup. That's the problem when you drop eight. You're only having a three-man rush. He has all day. Excellent protection by the offensive line. And then look at that bullet right down the football field into Burton's hands. Alabama races to the line of scrimmage. Young is ready. And it's going to be a first down carry. Tripped up McClellan. He'll gobble up three or four yards. It'll be second down and manageable for Alabama. Up 7-0. Bama's second trip to the red zone. They got the touchdown by McClellan the first time out. Time of possession. Clock's ticking away. They're very methodical on what they're doing right now. Using the clock. They're not huddling, obviously, but they're using the clock. Seventh play of the drive for Alabama. Young feeds McClellan. McClellan. Driving, plowing ahead past the five and whistled dead at the four yard line. First down. A ten yard gain to the first down sets up a first and goal for Alabama. Coach, what do you want to see more of out of this Alabama offense going forward? They've kind of stagnated a bit. They have, but I, when you say stagnated, I, I think what they're doing is their, their game plan. They want to run and pound these guys because of the sides mm -hmm. disadvantage yep. and throw when they have to. So I think what they're doing is executing their game plan very well on offense. They just got to continue to protect the football like they are in this drive. Williams alone back on first and goal. Young looking end zone wide open touchdown. Jermaine Burton with his fifth score of the season. The former Georgia Bulldog puts Alabama on top by two scores. Nice little uh, Coach O'Brien called rug route. Nice little rug route over there. The defensive coaches call that a pick, uh -huh. by the way. Yes. We had fun chatting about that a little <laughs> bit. But a nice little inside-outside cross over there as Coach O'Brien up in the press box. Really nice sound call. Really nice sound drive there. Yeah. Eight play, 80-yard touchdown drive for the Tide. Reichard will try to make it a perfect 49 for 49 on extra points this season. And that one hammered home. Alabama up 14-0. Right down the middle. They got that 14-point lead, but let's watch how it happened here. Come inside. They both drive upfield. They come and crisscross each other. Burton's wide open. Did get a little push off with the right hand. Look the ball in his hand. Puts it in for the touchdown. Back at Brian Denny Stadium, Alabama punching it in 14 at nothing on the board right now and talking about their leader and Bryce Young, their quarterback and the season that he has had. Mike Morgan, we showed those stats earlier in the game and his performance, maybe his numbers not where they're used to be. But Coach Saban talked about it. That setback that he had with the shoulder injury really not only hurt him, but really the football team as a whole, the receivers around him. Really a month he wasn't able to throw in practice. So those guys weren't able to progress as quickly and build up their confidence throughout a stretch of the season. But Coach Saban, though, is optimistic about the direction that unit is heading right now and is starting to really see some development and pro progress. Lauren, that is so true. It, it's not just that he was out during that time and again only missed a game that's going to be a 15 yarder right there a face mask penalty on the kickoff return which will go to the 24 and you're about to add 15 more yards that was a brutal hit might be Malachi Moore 
Contact in the return. Personal foul. Face mask. Kicking team. Number 13. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. First down. I believe that's Malachi Moore. They have two 13s on the roster. The second penalty on Alabama. Camp Thomas is breaking it up the middle there. Gets that big face mask drag. He's he's locally Birmingham, Alabama here, the, the home of Lauren Sisler. <laughs> That's what it says on the billboard when you enter the city lines, no question about that. But to go back to Lauren's point and, and what the coaching staff told us, Bryce only misses one game, right? And certainly he's dinged up. He has to play hurt for part of the year. But during that time, for one month, he did not throw the football in practice. They didn't want to exacerbate the shoulder injury. So one month, you don't have time to sync up with these new wide receivers. You lose guys like Mechie and Williams, high draft pick guys. That pass almost picked off by Anderson. Will Anderson already has an interception on the season, a touchdown on a pick six. Mr. Anderson's going to want this back. Starts in there, sees a little fake, gets up off the cut block. That's big man's dream there. Yes, it is. And you know if he hauls it in, he's taking it to the house. But I think that's the, the biggest storyline for this Alabama offense. Because Bryce Young is still Bryce Young. The reigning Heisman Trophy winner is still brilliant on the field. Penalty flag on the play. But when you don't have that cohesion with a lot of wideouts that didn't play much or at all last year, you don't just make up for that right away. And I think it's been a while it's been a long time coming to get everybody in sync. We haven't seen the dominating wide receiver play that we're used to in Tuscaloosa. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number 50, 15 yard penalty, second down. That's on Brennan Smith, the right tackle. So you know, if you're Bryce Young, you know, you, you've got that comfort level that you had a year ago and, and boom, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, you just you just don't have that. And so even though he's made the typical array of spectacular throws that very few quarterbacks in this game can make, it hasn't been the type of year last year where they threw for over 4,700 yards. He set all kinds of Alabama passing records. It's one word. It's called chemistry. Yeah. And you need that chemistry at, to, with the receivers, their routes, their timing. It's a very precision thing to accomplish, especially when you're getting rushes on you and things of that nature. Second down in a cheap Uber ride, and they convert it to the 45 of Alabama. Dre McCray on a 31-yard hookup. Dre McCray's their speedster. He has excellent hands, vision catching the football, but he's got top-end elite speed. Again in plus territory. It's the third time this Austin P offense has been there. See the snap, nice protection. He can step up in the pocket, delivers the ball wide open, a little underthrown, but there's a huge seam there in the cover two hole there. Governors keeping their foot on the gas on second down. That's a pick. That is Kool-Aid McKinstry. And McKinstry's got some blockers if he can stay on his feet. And he's tripped up around midfield by Javon Jackson. Otherwise, he's still running. But Kool-Aid McKinstry on the interception, the top cornerback on this Alabama defense in a 26-yard return. Mike, I got to tell you, I'm happy. There's the belt. Show me the belt, baby. Kool-Aid does a nice job there. I'm fired up for him because we met that young man yeah. yesterday. And what a really classy kid, young person. They're in press man coverage. Throws the jam, looks back, looks the ball up at high points it, lock it away. First pick of the year for that young man, Kool-Aid McKinstry. We talked about it earlier in this ballgame. Alabama, a very uncharacteristically low takeaway mark this year. That's just the eighth of the season. That is only four interceptions on the entire year. And here we are playing week 11, the 11th game of the season. So still minus one today in turnover margin, but they get the rare pick. Young again settles in the pocket all day to throw and finally goes underneath at the 30 yard line. It's Jermaine Burton who's been a heavy target in this first half. 16 yards and a first down. Shows you unbelievable poise by Bryce in the pocket because again they went on the deep corner route that was covered 
very well by Austin P. Okay, and then he comes down and he finds his check down, which is on the other side of the football field. Great vision on him and patience. He's completed his last seven. Bryce Young has little pitch play to the near side, weaving his way through traffic. It upended at the 21 is Roydale Williams. Shamari Simmons on the tackle for Austin P. Williams is an explosive guy. They ran a little speed option pitch there on the corner. I didn't think Bryce took two steps. I don't think he wanted to run that one at all. He mm -hmm. just two steps and get the ball out of his hands. Seeing about a 50 50 split run pass distribution thus far in this game for Alabama. One of the more balanced teams that you'll find. That play is blown up. Ball is jarred loose and incomplete. I mean, Demetrius Ford laid the lumber on the freshman target, Kobe Prentice. Rolling on the field is a Ford incomplete pass. Third down. He puts his foot in the grass, fires the gun, and smacks him right in the kisser. That young man is very explosive the way he can point, plant, and drive on a football. How about that? How about that textbook tackle there led with his shoulder coach, not the helmet? Which is really good. That's well coached. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to get out of the game. Defenders leading with the helmet. Third down and two. Straight ahead running and tripped up inside the 15. A first down for McClellan. Simmons on the tackle. Might have saved the touchdown. 11 yards for Jace McClellan, who's already got a career high in this game over the century mark. Breaking them down on film and studying them. They run a three-safety system. I was very impressed with their safeties. You know, with Simmons, he has 51 tackles already this year. That's, that's impressive very for a safety strong. position. On first down, Young, handoff, bottled up. McClellan got stonewalled at the line of scrimmage. In fact, will lose a yard or two. There's a situation there where Coach talked about, uh, Coach Cap has talked about that 5-5-1. Five, five, what I mean by that is they're rushing five, they're playing five in man coverage, and the one is that post safety in case something breaks. There's a shot of him up in the box. Very, very cerebral coach. Has great intensity, but very cerebral. On second down and 12. Empty backfield and a five wide look. Here comes the blitz. Young. Missiles one complete inside the 10 and down to the six yard line. First time we've called Treshawn Holden's name. He's a junior out of Kissimmee, Florida. A town you know a thing or two about, coach. Kissimmee, that's right, baby. I'm right next door in Posiana there. And I go down to the Publix at Kissimmee all the time, get go. the groceries. Yeah. Actually, I should say my wife does because I just, she buys them, I eat them. We yeah. got a 50-50 relationship. Well, that's, a, that's a fair, a fair trade-off if there ever was one. Seventh play of the drive on third down and three for Bama. And Austin P is going to burn that third and final timeout. Timeout. Austin P. Their third and final of the half. Three we'll take timeout time on the field. 14 nothing Alabama. Now 14 nothing our score here. Don't forget week 12 and the SEC continues on the SEC network at 4 o'clock. It'll be Auburn hosting Western Kentucky. And then the nightcap. Number 14 Ole Miss coming off that tough loss to the Alabama Crimson Tide in Oxford. They'll be battling Arkansas at 7.30 Eastern time. Gary Odom coaching that Arkansas defense. Someone with ties to one Coach Steckel here in the booth. First to third down and four for Alabama. Young with McClellan to his right. Austin P. Peels back, eight in coverage. Young all day to throw, but nobody's open. Now a penalty flag. Now Young rolling out and will take a sack. You got a flag in the backfield. You got a sack for Austin P. Knifley gets credit for the sack for the time being. I think they have a holding call up there. He got pancaked and just laid on him. You can't just lay on him. They make that call a holding call. Mm -hmm. You know, they got that big old Molly Hawker. Like, you know, Molly Hawker, that's a, a, an endearing term for an offensive lineman. A Molly Hawker? A Molly Hawker, that's an endearing term. Can you get you know? like a Hallmark Valentine's Day card? Be my 
Do my Molly Holly Hunter? Holding, offense, number 54. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's Tyler Steen, the former Vanderbilt Con Commodore, very reliable left tackle for the Tide. Again, they don't allow many sacks. Alabama does it when Bryce Young is out there. Here you see him. Wants to make a little dip move. He got him extended. He takes him. He throws him down. And there's where he jumps on top of him. <laughs> you know, that's that's the physical play on an inside thing. And man, my man Steen is big. He molly hocked him, right? There you go. 29 yarder is perfect for Reichert. 20th field goal of the year for Reichert. How about the day thus far for Jace McClellan? Again, no. Jameer gives today, so a career performance already for the junior out of Alito, Texas. Look at that. Hey, look at his burst. Look at the speed there. Got a little push there. Here's one play comes up. He, look at that little jump cut, his vision. Tough runner inside also. Here again, jump cut, acceleration, burst. A little straight arm, like I told you earlier. Derrick Henry, here he is right here. Boom! Sit down, fool. And he's off around the corner. Good chance Gibbs will be off to the NFL. McClellan could be the guy next year. See already a career high 128 yards, averaging nearly 10 yards a tote thus far. And, and we're not even at halftime yet. We're not at halftime. I tell you, as good as his game has been, I think a lot of people that will be scoreboard watching will look at this score and say, wait a minute. Alabama only up 17 at the half. That could be the case. Still got 227 to go. And Austin P about to get the football. Real close from being 17 14 slash 17 6. Right. If they would have taken those points. Yeah, Austin P. A missed turnover, a fourth down that did not convert inside the five yard line of Alabama. So. Well, here is Austin P. And again, I always like to say, Coach, not all FCS programs are built the same. If you want an automatic dub, there's a lot of teams you can schedule. This is a team that knows how to win. This is a team that is very much on the bubble. They're seven and three. They could make the FCS playoffs. The selection show will be tomorrow. So, Coach, telling us they're going to have a, a watch party and find out if they get to go. Of course, you can watch the entire road to the national championship here on the ESPN family of networks. I I've done that event a few times. That's a lot of fun. I know you've coached at that level before. A whole lot of fun. I have. And I'll tell you what, I think they're worthy of having a bid. they got to have a couple things in play to win the conference and get the automatic bid. But I think they are very worthy of being able to get in that playoff. And if they do, they're going to be a stick, scary draw. Yeah, no question. They dominated a number of their games this season. Warren, what do you have? Yeah, guys, I had the opportunity last year to couple, cover a couple FCS games and uh, the quarterfinals, the semifinals. And, you know, I just love this team and the fight that they have. And talking to a couple of the players, of course, their quarterback, Mike DeLillo, he's one of those guys that just said, look, we've earned this. We've worked hard. We've fought. And we're going to come out here and keep fighting against this Alabama football team, and we'll see where the cards fall. But I think this team feels like they have a strong case against it, and uh, they've just pushed and grinded all season long. And I've just loved their energy out here on the sidelines throughout the entire football game. It's hard not to love, Lauren. It's hard not to love the, the effort they've given thus far. This game could be a lot closer. McCray was the guy that DeLillo was looking for, but he was shadowed by Arnold on the play. Nice little swap switch at the line of scrimmage there. McCray's looking back for the ball. Excellent coverage there by Arnold. When I talked to Coach Sampson earlier in the week, he really did think that McCray would be a good mismatch for Arnold there. And Arnold did a very nice job of trailing, getting his hand in there and knocking that down. And again, McCray, we had a great chat with him yesterday. He said, I'm not going to be intimidated. We went to an SEC school last year. He performed quite well against Ole Miss in a loss in 2021. Nothing going rare, going anywhere there. That's toe toe on the tackle. The senior out of Sacramento, California, former Tennessee volunteer. They've had to play with a lot of their top linebackers out of the lineup. They still have two out of the top five out with injury. At times they played the three out of the top five injured. That was something Nick Saban was quick to point out in our meetings yesterday. They did a game like this when you're playing Austin P. Though is the linebacker doesn't have a lot of play right now. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's a perimeter game, so the secondary's got to shine. And in the run game, the D-line is just manhandling the front right now, except for that one long run. Draw play on third down. We'll pick up a couple. 
It'll be fourth and long. Under a minute to go, and I, I, I would think punt. Timeout. Alabama, their first of the half. 30 seconds in length. Now, coming up at the half, you can watch the live performance of Million Dollar Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. What are you thinking here, Coach? Do you go for broke, or do you just play it safe, try to keep it a 17-point game at the half? Well, again, being a conservative defensive coach here, A, on the flip side with Coach Saban, he took the timeout. They're going to have a plan over there. You see the two huddles. Are we going to uh, have the punt return team here? I would punt the ball here. And the reason why is 17 make it good. He used the timeout so he can get the ball. The curious thing is going to be, are they going to try to go on a quick two-minute drill down here and score and put points? Now, Austin P gets the ball at halftime, so they're not going to be able to double down on their score. Kool-Aid McKinstry back for the punt of Matt Rigney. Alabama heavy rush, almost a block. And it winds up being a good punt. Angled out of bounds around the 20, so no chance for a turn for Kool-Aid. That surprised me from the standpoint of they looked like they were max uh, blocking there. I thought they were going to try to set up a nice long return and then yeah. get into a two-minute drill, and they, they tricked me there with the uh, after. Illegal formation, kicking team, more than four players in the backfield. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down. Yeah, it was Roy Dell Williams, incidentally, that got in there and almost got a piece of that punt. Now Alabama will have it 47 seconds to go, two timeouts. And I would imagine they would be aggressive here, a chance to get another score before the half. I agree with your assessment there. I believe they are going to be aggressive here. Those NFL guys, which, which Mike uh, Bill O'Brien has that pedigree. He's like, hey, give me the ball. Yep. And two timeouts, ooh, those are bonus points for me. And this is where Bryce Young has been brilliant throughout his career when you play in a hurry-up offense situation. They work on this. We watched the entire practice on Thursday. They worked on two-minute drill, hurry up. It's like a clinic the way they do it. Oh, Young is drilled from the backside, hammered by Demetrius Ford. That's the third sack today for Austin P and a loss of eight. Corner blitz coming off the edge there. Doesn't see it, doesn't get rid of the ball fast enough. And that is really hard when you get hit from the blind side. Coach Cap has dialed up the cat corner blitz at the right time. Oh, you and I were watching that from up here, thinking this is really going to hurt if Bryce Young doesn't feel that pressure, and he never felt it from the corner. Saw, saw a really, really good burst. The receiver didn't chip him on the way out. The mm -hmm. running back, excuse me, the running back didn't chip him on the way out. And he had a free run to that quarterback because they slid the protection to the field. Great disguise by the defense. A defensive player was injured while the clock was running. This qualifies for a 10-second runoff. Please reset the game clock to 18 seconds. The game clock will start on my signal. It's Tyler Steen, the injured player, the left tackle. Watch this hit again. As you mentioned, that there's no chip here. He comes in clean. Doesn't chip it. He has a free run to the quarterback on his back. You see the whiplash with the head going back. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing I do like, look at Bryce Young. He gets right it's back right up. up. Yep. It shows you his boxing, his toughness. But there, make no mistake about it, man. You got hit from the back like that. He won't be in the whirlpool tonight or tomorrow morning. No question. You're going to be feeling that. And somebody's going to be feeling the wrath of Coach O'Brien and Nick Saban to let a clean shot like that happen from the blind side on your Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Bryce Young. So now it's second and 18 setting up shop at the 22 and Bama will go conservative straight up the gut and muscling ahead is McClellan for eight more yards to add to his career day. And that'll bring us to the end of a first half that I wouldn't say it was dominated by Alabama. Austin P had a lot of opportunities to put some points on the board. As it is, they hold Alabama to a 17-0 halftime lead, and the Governors will get the ball first in the second half. This will be an interesting conversation with Lauren Sissler and Nick Saban. Lauren, take it away. 
Coach, it looked like you guys had a methodical approach on offense. What did you see from that unit here in the first half? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, we turned the ball over twice, you know, once on special teams and once on offense, which allowed them to keep the ball in their nickel diamond us quite a bit. But we got to make some explosive plays on offense. Uh, I think we've been controlling the line of scrimmage pretty well, but no explosive plays. We've got to score more points. Yeah, Austin P with the two force turnovers, some explosive plays, but Cooley McKinstry there with the uh, interception, obviously great there in the second quarter. What do you want to see more from your defense in the second half? Well, uh, you know, they keep hitting us with that one pattern into the boundary, so we've got to do a better job against that. So, um, But that's something we've seen before, and we've got to get it fixed. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Right, thank you. Lauren, thank you very much. Nick Saban and his Alabama Crimson Tide trying to make it 9-2 and two on the year. They'll take a 17-0 lead to intermission. Plenty to come on our halftime show. In the second half not far away, Alabama and Austin P here in Tuscaloosa. the SEC Halftime Report. Dari Noka, Chris Doring, and Takeo Spikes as we look ahead to some games a little bit later in the day, starting in Lexington, where no question, it'll be loud, it'll be cold as Big Blue hosts the number one team in all the land, the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. What will you be most focused on as you watch these two teams get going? I want to see the Big Blue wall show some type of light, Chris. Mm -hmm. We've seen them struggle over really the entire season. And now you look at UGA defensive front. These guys have woke up over the past three games. Mm -hmm. They have 10 sacks. They found a way to get back to the quarterback and not only get back there, but to finish the job by sacking the quarterback. It's been the absolute Achilles heel for this Kentucky team that I thought had a lot of promise heading into the season. They've not been able to protect Will Levis. I feel bad for him. He's been the most sacked quarterback in the conference, and they can't run the football either, which is not good. So I think you're, you're looking at a mismatch right now. And you go back to the Tennessee game, you saw the pressure was created with a lot of different blitzes. I don't think that they'll have to do that at all just because of what Jalen Carter and the rest of that defensive front for, uh, for Georgia have been able to do. I, I think they're going to have a lot of success at, uh, at getting after the quarterback and really stymieing things up there in the run game. Remarkable, isn't it, how they've been able to essentially really reload and not miss much of a beat at all with an offense that – is probably better than it was a year ago when they won the championship. Yeah, it's plug and play on the defensive side. And the most impressive thing, as you mentioned, is you're seeing young freshmen come in. I think about Malachi Starks, uh, mm -hmm. the safety. Uh, him coming in, just being such a leader at such a young age, not by what he says, but just by his play. And all of those guys gelling together, picking up new schemes week in and week out and going out executing, especially against Tennessee. And, Dar, you mentioned the offense. I mean, there's a lot of people that are finding it hard to believe that Stetson Bennett's in the Heisman Trophy conversation right now, but you look at the Vegas odds, he's in the top five, so he very easily could find his way there. It's been a tremendous story. The walk-on that grew up a Georgia fan that's now having an opportunity to yeah. lead his team yeah. in a – quest for a back-to-back -back yeah. national championship. Even though he leads him to a national title and he says he's coming back to like, I don't even know if he's going to start this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just let him do a national championship. He's done a great job. He's man. done a phenomenal job. All right. Also, a little bit later, ESPN 7 Eastern, Tennessee, number five team in the country, taking on South Carolina. South Carolina got drilled by Florida in their game last week. And now Tennessee comes in, 66 points last week in their game against Missouri. What like how much? How does South Carolina make this remotely interesting? They, they've got to. They've got to be creative. I mean, this is a, a team that's been a disappointment as well. I, Spencer Rattler is a, a player we thought was going to come in and and have an immediate impact, surrounded by a bunch of skilled players. They too have struggled on the offensive line up front. I think at this po point in time, though, Marcus Satterfield has to just throw everything out there. Let's 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 be creative. Let's get to Karen Joyner at the quarterback position with some some snaps that can put some pressure on the defense. Let's find a way to 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 get some of these weapons that you have down the field and create some explosive plays that they haven't done this year. They need to come up with a new playbook, Beamer Ball offense and Beamer Ball defense <laughs> because Tennessee is just taking out all of their frustrations on the next opponent. We saw what they did against Missouri, hanging up over 700 total yards, which was a record. So, for me, when I look at this matchup, it's going to be very tough for Carolina to be able to stay in this game. 
And the Jalen Hyatt story just keeps going. 15 touchdown catches. He's year. had a tremendous season. Remember, this was a guy that hadn't had a ton of consistent success. Then Cedric Tillman goes out, and all of a sudden, Hyatt becomes the focal point of that offense. But I think the thing that's so amazing about the development of the offense as a whole has been guys like Brew McCoy coming in and, and contributing. Now you get Cedric Tillman back, not completely healthy at this point, but you could spread the ball around to a lot of different receivers, which as you know is tough on a defense when you're talking about your fourth or fifth best cover guy having to cover Tennessee's fourth or fifth best receiver. And as soon as you try to focus on the fourth or fifth best receiver, these guys can run the ball as well. They're mm -hmm. almost averaging 200 yards yeah. rushing per game. So, like, you know, pick your poison. That's the bottom line. With a quarterback that can run. Yeah. Too. You concerned at all in any respect about Tennessee on the defensive side, particularly in the back half? Is that anything that bothers you that we think could rear its ugly head at some point? Cons inconsistent play. You look at what, what they did previously before they played Georgia. Uh, played very well. They got everybody pallet thinking, oh, my God, Tennessee is finally putting it together. But from what I've seen studying film, not being cohesive from the secondary coming all the way with the defensive line, not being able to beat the one-on-ones up front, in particular when they call pass rush blitzes and stunts of that nature. So they have to continue to keep refining the process. But mm -hmm. when, you are, when you have a team that an offense scores so many points like that, Chris, like you can afford not to – I hate to say this, I'm a defensive guy. You can afford yeah. not to be as good on the defensive side because – you know your offense is going to bail you That's out. That's a good point because, Dari, we, we talked about that 2019 Joe Burrow-led offense and mm -hmm. the pressure that they not only put up against the defenses that they were playing, but the opposing offenses and how they're forced to hold serve. You don't have the luxury of missing on a possession or even going down and kicking a field goal against Tennessee because yeah. you're going to fall behind. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're not – like you said, they, they can – that's a team that knows how to step on the neck and yeah, keep pushing, right, finished. not let you back up. All right, primetime game later on this network, SEC Network. It's going to take us to Fayetteville. Arkansas home against Ole Miss. Razorbacks, they're 5-5. Five and five. they got to win either this game or against Missouri next week on the road on Friday after Thanksgiving to get to a bowl game. Let's say it happens here. What's going to have to happen for Arkansas? To it's going to start with their defense. And, and Takio, mm. you and I have talked an awful lot about the disappointing – uh, nature of this defense. Barry Odom has been tremendous as the coordinator there in Fayetteville. This year they've had failures in the secondary. They haven't been able to stop the run. They haven't tackled very well. But we saw them all put that together and put it behind them against LSU. They had seven sacks of Jaden Daniels last Saturday. Uh, they were able to, to tackle much better and limited that LSU offense to only 13 points. So I do feel like if Arkansas is going to win, it's going to be by stopping the run and putting pressure on Jackson Dart to beat you, which I don't know he can do, and I don't know if the offensive line can protect long enough for him to do. Yeah, and they did a phenomenal job going up against LSU, holding them down to a season low under 300 yards. And for me, when I turned on the tape, it clearly stated they understood the assignment. What was asked of them from Barry Odom, they went out and executed. It's going to be a different monster playing against Ole Miss, but if they can continue to do the little things well mm. with something that they struggled on earlier, they should be – they'll make it a competitive game for sure. Yeah. That run game of Ole Miss, though, continues to lead the league, and that freshman, Quinshawn Judkins, as good as uh, any freshman. Turn on that Alabama tape in the second half. They yeah. did a pretty good job for the most part. That's right. I think they'll score, what, seven points seven in the points. second half of, uh, of that game uh, against Alabama. Didn't score at all in the fourth quarter. All right. Of course, when it's all over later tonight, the three of us and Benjamin Watson coming your way with a full 60-minute recap of a 10-game day around the SEC. All that coming up tonight when we're done in Arkansas on SEC Football Final. Some of the national championship trophies for the Alabama Crimson Tide looking for their ninth win of the season, leading the Governor's of Austin P 17 to nothing. Bryant Denny Stadium. He is the coach Dave Steggel. I am Mike Morgan. Great to be with you. Coach, let's talk about this first half, okay? 17 nothing. A lot of people are going to look at that score and say, well, that's closer than I thought. Add to that all the missed opportunities for Austin P. And you're saying to yourself, what's going on here? I agree. That's a great observation. <laughs> and it really should be 17 6. 
They, they didn't go for the one field goal, and they missed the other field goal. So there, there's some yelling and screaming, I think, going over on in the Alabama locker room. And the other flip side of it is in the Austin Pay locker room, I believe they're saying, hey, guys, we got this. some opportunities. Let's get another couple more takeaways. Let's protect the football, and let's go down and score. Well, Austin Pay certainly had opportunities to score. They go for it on fourth down early on in that first quarter. Who knows what kind of game this would be if they make it. Especially right there, there's a nice job of getting them in the end zone. They reviewed it. They said it was a touchdown. They come back. They're going for the touchdown instead of taking the field goal, but they, they was holding on the play, in my opinion. Then they come back down and miss a nice little chip shot. Beautiful fourth down conversion. That was a lightning bolt by Bryce Young. You could hear the spin of the ball up here in the press box. And then they come down here and do a little cross route, hits them in the flat, touchdown, brings them up. Bryce Young sacked three times a season high in that first half as Austin P dialed up some blitzes and they were successful. Again, if you just look at it statistically, you'd say, well, Alabama's kind of dominated the first half, but again, the two turnovers giving Austin P a short field, but the governor's unable to capitalize. So closer than anybody, including us, would have expected here in the first 30 minutes. What are you expecting to see here in the second half? What I think I'm going to see right now is they got to protect the ball, Alabama. I'm sure Coach is really crazy about the turnovers with the two turnovers. We talked long and hard about that with Coach yesterday, and we need to get more turnovers. I'm telling you right now, that's being preached at the locker room right now. And on the flip side with Austin P, they got to protect that football, Mike. We talked about Alabama, one of its worst turnover margins for the season coming in. They were minus five, and so far they're minus one in this football game. Let's check in with Lauren. All right, I got Coach Walden coming in here. You guys created some opportunities there in the first half, some positive plays. Love seeing that energy that you guys played with. How can you carry some of that momentum and capitalize on those opportunities here in the second half? Yeah, we just talked about it. We got to execute better in the red zone. I mean, like at the end of the day, like we didn't come here to keep it close. We came here to win, and that's what we got to go do. We got to go compete. And, and, I, and I'm seeing our guys starting to see that belief, but God, we, should, we had that confidence early, man, you know, and, but it, it took, you know, a couple big plays to get that confidence. And now we got to go, we got to go finish drives, you know. We moved the ball on them, but we got to go finish. They're a great football team, and you're going to have to execute at your best and play at your best to be able to punch in the end zone. But uh, our kids are playing their hearts out. Um, you know, th this is just, this is going to be a big test right here in this third quarter. Uh, we're going to have to go focus on winning the third quarter right here. Yeah, give us a little snippet of what you told the team there in the locker room. I, exactly what I just told you, Lauren. We didn't come here to keep it close. We came here to compete and it came here to win. That's our standard. That's our culture. And it's about us. It ain't about this is just a stadium with a little more people than what we're used to. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a 100 yard field and we plan on playing some football this second half. Governor football. Thanks so much, coach. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. He came from Southern Miss, 33 year old Scotty Walden still fired up. So are we for the second half. It's coming at you when we return from Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Mike Morgan with the head coach, Dave Steckel, Lauren Sisler here in Tuscaloosa. Start of the third quarter about to unfold 17-0. And the pep talk continues for the governors. They left some opportunities on the table. Austin P, by the way, does have a win against Power 5 competition. It happened in the 1980s against Kansas State before Coach Snyder got there. I mentioned they've played some SEC teams in recent years and trying to pull off what would be the upset of a lifetime against the number eight team in America, the Alabama Crimson Tide. It'll be Austin P on offense first. You see, there's what happened September the 5th, 1987. Austin P shocking K State in the last 10 seconds of the game in the Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas. 26 22 was the final score. And they will dare to dream of such a fate here today, down 17 with one half to play at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama has won 55 consecutive non-conference regular season games. First down scamper by C.J. Evans, a junior out of Mobile. Jaheem Otis on the stop. C.J. made a really good jump cut there, Mike, because the nose guard just blew the center up in the backfield to make him avert his path. Delello on second down. Same play, similar result. It'll be third down at about five. Otis on another tackle after a gain of about three for Evans, who had that touchdown, his first career touchdown, a 75-yarder in the first game during COVID back in 2020, a game 
televised nationally on ESPN. Nice situation here. Very third and five. Very manageable play. Look for some type of pick cross route right there by the sticks on a slant or a hitch. Governor's two for six on third down. Rollout. Pass. Complete. Work to perfection to Dre McCray, their top playmaker, and that'll move the sticks. They took the outside receiver and ran him vertical, took the inside receiver, had him come off his butt right by the sticks on the rollout. Nice accuracy there by my man DeLillo. And DeLillo out of the shotgun on first down from a 35. Straight ahead handoff and brought down for a loss is C.J. Evans. A tackle for loss for Alabama. Dallas Turner came knifing in from his linebacking spot. A loss of two. It looks like they're trying to be a little manageable. They're coming out running the ball, which they didn't do on their opening drive. They kept coming out and throw, throw, throw. Now they're doing running, trying to manage a little clock. They must have looked at the time possession. Now keep it on the ground, getting to the edge. Now turning it upfield at the 40 and down to the 41 is Evans toe toe on the tackle after a gain of seven. Mike what they did on that play there is they went into the boundary and they they ran the Goku over there where they run this bubble and the bubble and go and they took the linebacker out of the box and popped the run on them. Again third and fourth and manageable here for them. Seems like they've been in this situation all game. Third down intermediate. Bama dials up an extra pressure man throw into double coverage and incomplete Stewart was bracketed on the play Brian Branch is the guy that tipped it away he's had an all-American type season the safety at a Fayetteville Georgia coming down the field they're double coverage here looks back over top of it both jobs really nice job there by Branch tipping the ball getting it over top with Arnold over top and Branch underneath Branch helped preserve that win over Ole Miss last week with a pass breakup late in the fourth quarter. They love their safeties. At times, the corners have been tested this year with some big plays. They stayed in punt safe here. They ran the punt team out here late. No pressure on the kick there. Kool-Aid angling back. And a fair catch at the 16-yard line. Defense is stepping up in the field. You see Toto coming across, coming across, chasing the ball down, wrapping, bringing him to the ball, down to the ground. Seventeen, nothing. Our score. That number that you see at the bottom left hand of your screen is very telling. Seven hundred plus yard receiver every year for Nick Saban in this offense since 2011 coach and you know here we stand and it's the 11th game of the season and nobody is at that mark the closest guy would be Ja'Cory Brooks who by the way only has one catch so far in this game but really their top receiver has been the running back Jameer Gibbs and Ja'Cory Brooks is now looks like he's out for the game pads are off sweatshirt is on so we're not going to see any more of number seven in crimson but they just haven't had those game breaking wide receivers this year they have not and Jacory is their guy he's got 530 plus yards which is far off from what they really usually have here they tried to hit him a couple times deep on the corner route but he was well covered young coxon fires and that one out of the reach uh, number 19 kendrick law he's one of those freshman wide receivers that they're so high on but again, they're, they're still freshmen and they're still learning. Isaiah Bond, we haven't talked about him much, but that's the guy we were told to keep our eye on in this ball game, particularly if the score gets a little bit more out of hand. Right now, it's still very competitive in a third and five facing this Bama offense. Well, Bond, if you remember, ran that jet sweep that they pitched the ball to him and he fumbled the ball. So, you know, turning that ball over might put him in the doghouse a little bit. They'll go trips to the far side here on third down and five. 11 51 to go in the third quarter. Young again all day to throw and in and out of the hands of 84. That's the tight end Amari Nyblack and Nyblack with Cameron Latou out today. We were told we'd see quite a bit of opportunities for number 84. He had one here. He did. They dropped eight again. He finds a little hole in the middle. 
Ball is in his hand. He looked away to feel the hit coming at him. And again, I keep going back to it. You catch the football with your eyes. You have to have your eyes lead it to your hands and lock it away. And he looked at the defensive back. As a first punt for Alabama. If you bought stock in Australian punters invading college football, you can cash in. He's another Aussie. A fair catch at the 31 yard line, but some laundry on the field. Usually as a spot for holding as they, those gunners run down the field to cover the punt. Let's see what he has to say for us. This is going to put him in a tough spot, Mike. Another 15 yards back from there. Kyle Olson's our referee. Daring to kick, holding, receiving team, number 12. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. That's on Jaheim Moore. The Governors will take over first and 10 when we come back from Tuscaloosa. Well, it's been an embarrassment of riches for first round wide receiving talent here lately in Tuscaloosa. Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy. I mean, these are all first round draft picks that have had tremendous NFL careers. Ruggs, the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith, Waddle, Jamison Williams from a year ago. I mean, it, it's just every time you've watched or covered an Alabama game over the years, their wideouts have been a nightmare for defensive coordinators to cover up because even if you've got one double teamed, that's another first rounder who's about to beat you. This year has been a little bit different dynamic. There has been, and you're absolutely right. They used to just funnel them in one after the mm -hmm. other after the other. And this year, they, their guy that they want to rake a real big job was Ja'Cory Brooks. Mm -hmm. and, and he is not stepping up completely to the plate. And that goes back to our conversation we had earlier about the chemistry that Bryce is not being able to work with through right. the practice time. Governors with it. And good night. What a pop by Brian Branch. McCray got it and thought he'd be able to find some daylight. Number 14 and Cripson had other ideas. He came down there and he has a bad attitude when he get there. He takes off through the thing, does a nice job keeping his head out of the contact and flattens McCray. You're talking about receivers though, Mike. McCray is a thousand yard receiving. He's only the fourth player in Austin P history. Hey, reached that mark in this ball game. Second down and long, slithering his way for a couple of CJ Evans. Will Anderson racks up another tackle. Still a lot of starters out there for Alabama, and a lot of that has to do with the score. I tell you this, I mean, watching the teams prep this week, going to practice on Thursday, listening to the coaches yesterday, they weren't going to take this game lightly, and they weren't going to just rest guys. They want to continue to stay sharp. Big one coming up next week right here at Bryant-Denny Stadium, the Iron Bowl against the Auburn Tigers. We didn't practice with yesterday. Well, this is a big play right now. They have to stay on the field here. They emptied the backfield. It's got to come out of that quick. Stacking the receivers each way. On third and long, DeLillo rolling out. Spins and completes the pass to the 26. Well shy of a first down. It's Cam Thomas on the reception, but only good for a couple of yards. Well, that's, a, that's a rare three and out that we've seen in this game. Austin P has had some success on offense, but not that time. They came after him last time on the punt. I'd be curious to see if they set up a return here on this one because they'll get a really good field position getting past the 50 with a good holdup by the punt return team. McKinstry back to receive. Always dangerous when the ball is in his hands. High spiraling kick and a fair catch called for at the 34 and a half. And that's where Alabama will take over. Let's say hello again to Lauren Sisler. Hey guys, you know, the theme this week for Alabama has been recapturing the culture. Nick Saban told the team, if anyone can watch you practice and prepare for this game and know who you're playing against, then that's an indictment on who you are. He said, let's not get humiliated to get motivated. He feels this team has really responded well in practice this week. He saw him compete hard, physical toughness, and really trying to play up to that Alabama standard. I, I thought... Lauren, the, the comments from Nick Saban when he huddled his team after practice the other day were 
very, very strong. And he said it's it's not who we play, it's who we are and what we do. And he doesn't want anybody to ever have to question the culture of this program. There's a deep ball and a wide open man at the 25 yard line. That's Burton. Burton with a shake at the 20. Inside and out of bounds at the 15 yard line. A 50 yard gain, the biggest one of the day for Alabama. That was right on time. Coach Saban talked about explosives. Here's a little stutter step, and he just runs by the guy because the corner thinks they're going to run the fall into the flat on a naked. Bryce steps back in the pocket and launches one. He's thinking he's got safety help there, right? Why else would you let the man run right by you? He did have safety help with the with the 551 blitz, but uh -huh. the safety didn't get over over top. Right. But the other thing he did, you know, the throw on the money here coming back. And and the other thing I used to always tell defensive backs here that my man number two four did, if you're if you're watching the quarterback throw the ball in man to man coverage, then you're gonna watch the receiver yeah. catch the ball. That's a problem. Second down and five with McClellan to the left of Young. Feeds him. McClellan to the five. McClellan to the end zone for the second time today. He came back with that old Packer double G sweep to the right. That you know, old uh, Vince Lombardi made mm -hmm. famous. Coach O'Brien kind of rolled out his chest today talking about that play. And he walks right on into the end zone. That's the drive they needed, Mike. That is the drive they needed. All set up by the big pass play, 50 yards, Young to Burton. First two touchdown game of the career of Jace McClellan. And his career day continues, 156 yards with those two scores as Riker tacks on the extra point. 24-0 score with 8.43 to go in the third. Nice job here coming in. Got the big pass play, then here comes the double guards with a block and the seal. Slides up in through the middle. Takes it into the end zone, and here comes a little dancing and happy. Alabama strikes first in the second half. Best looking drive of the day for the Crimson Tide. Didn't take long. Three plays, 65 yards, 58 seconds off the clock. A 50 yard pass play to Burton. And then the second touchdown of the game for Jace McClellan, the tailback. 24-0 lead now for Alabama. Trying to improve to 9-2 on the season. Stewart on the return, trying to take it wide. Penalty flag on the play. This will likely come back. I believe it's another holding call, Mike. Stewart showed a nice burst up the middle there, that speed he has. for holding on the kickoff. First down. Lawrence Sisler, what do you have? Hey, look, we got some solid dance moves going on after that last touchdown. The Sisler here, the dance machine, I approve with some dance moves. Oh, yeah, got to get into it. Woo! Look, you know, I got to tell you, down on the sidelines here, you see the spark of energy. This is one thing the players talked about yesterday, talking to DeCorey Brooks and Kool-Aid McKinstry, that really this energy and this excitement came back to the team last week against Ole Miss after the game, seeing them smile, seeing them having fun, being able to dance on the sidelines. And we've been seeing that over here just after that touchdown. The guys are smiling. They're having fun again. And that's been a key word from Nick Saban and the players this week getting back to having fun on a more consistent basis. Yeah, yeah you got to. That's no fun on that handoff exchange to Samuel. Uh, and Lauren will be having some more fun, maybe some more dancing in the fourth quarter as this thing continues to move. I, look, I think... Oh, yeah. <laughs> having, having done a number of Alabama games over the years, I mean, this is kind of uncharted territories. They haven't been this late in the year where they're almost mathematically out of it since 2010 you, you look at the last 12 seasons and when you're playing in late November you're still thinking national title if you're Alabama that's not likely to happen you've got less than a 15 percent chance of actually making the college football playoffs so how do you stay motivated coach when you realize some of your goals might not be met this season well the thing I love about 
Coach Saban is he always talks about the process, and you only get 12 of these games. You're guaranteed 12 football games, and that's it. This is number 10 on the schedule, so you have to be excited to play these football games no matter what the circumstances are, with all the hard work that you put into it. So it's another football game, and I'm glad they're using the word fun. Coach Saban is hopefully having fun because he got that explosive play. He wanted one, he got one, and now he might have himself a three and out on defense. That one was intended for Stewart on the play, a fourth and four. And now if you're Austin P, forget about analytics, you might be just thinking, we got to get something going before this one gets out of hand. And I know it's against the book to go from, for it from your own 39, but why not? You just you just put a dagger in my heart when you use the term <laughs> analytics. Who in the world has invented analytics, man? What happened to the gut of calling and being sound right. and conservative? And and I'm not buying into this fourth and short. He's going to try to draw him off sides. No, he's oh. not. Oh. They're going for the flea flicker. Flea flicker the and it's fumbled and it's pounced on by Alabama's Damon Payne, the red shirt freshman. Just like that, they get another turnover, two turnovers for the day, and look at the scoring position. And what I what I mean by this, it's 24-0, Mike, with an opportunity here now to go bang at the snap of a finger yeah. and make it 31-0. Yeah, I don't know if analytics would tell you to go for it in this spot or not, but I do know if you want to play like this to work, you got to have a good exchange. And Samuel and DeLillo did not get one there, and that play was doomed the moment that ball hit the ground. I really thought they were going to try to draw him off sides. And now you got the best starting position of the game if you're Alabama from the 29 of the Govs. Young, play action, looking deep. Now will go underneath. Caught at the 30, that's Oots the tight end, breaking tackles, rumbling, stumbling inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Gain of 12. I tip my hat to Austin P there. Again, coach wants explosives, but they went two verticals up on the sidelines, and it was well covered with their quarter's coverage, and he had to dump it off again into the flat to Oots. Yeah, they wanted the deep shot, settled for underneath, worked out well. This one will not work out so well. It's Roy Dale Williams on the carry. No gain on the play. Simmons on another stop for Austin P. One thing I've noticed in the last couple run plays is Steen left the football game, if you remember, coming out there, okay? And my man Kite, that weak side over there on that left side, yeah. there's some leakage coming in over there. Something to keep an eye on with his performance. Something they'll keep an eye on looking ahead of the Iron Bowl. I'd love to have a healthy Tyler Steen back at that left tackle spot. Play clock down to seven. Blitz coming. Young hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. That's the second time he's got walloped from the backside. Daryl Rogan, the bandit back, making the shot. Coach Chaffin is doing a good job of really disguising their blitzes here. First time they come off on a weak side safety blitz coming up through the left gap. The B gap opened up like the Red Sea there, and he had a clean shot. That's two clean shots at the quarterback. This is actually a game where they're going to have some film to take a look at and work on for next week. Bama three for seven on third down. Well, the thing that's also happening is helping Auburn realize the, the blitz schemes that are getting to the mm -hmm, protection. Right. Clean pocket for Bryce Young. Now flushed out to the left. Nobody open, reversing field. This is when he's at his best. Does he have another Houdini in him? From the 20. Touchdown! Did it again! Bryce Young buying time, making magic. Kobe Prentice with the score, but a penalty flag back near the line of scrimmage. An eligible player downfield, offense number 65. Five yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. He had nearly nine seconds of time in the pocket, Bryce Young did. And like he normally does, so good at improvising, but the penalty will take the score off the board. There's his, there's his Houdini act here. 
Nice coverage. They drop eight in the pocket. Scrambles to his left. Now what they got to do on the back end, coach talked about getting sticky with it. They got to match the coverage, which they did not do. Sits back, fires a pull in the end for the touchdown. Hard on those offensive linemen when he's scrambling, not getting downfield. Which is ironic because Nick was talking with us, went on a whole diatribe about he thinks that's not called enough in college football. A lot of defensive coordinators would agree with him. It just happened to him. Third down and 15. I think they call that one of those self-fulfilling prophecies, yes, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. Play clock down to one. Just got it off in time. Another blitz. Young. Rifles one complete at the 12. That's Holden on the reception. Brought down immediately by Sedarius Doss after a gain of eight. I'm in awe right now. I'm so excited watching this young man play quarterback because his accuracy, his arm strength, the way that ball spins out of his hands, I understand now watching him live yeah. how Coach O'Brien just loves this kid as a football player. Now, as a Heisman voter, I can tell you, someone who voted for him last year like most did, he hasn't done anything to lose his stature as one of the best in the game. They just haven't put up the same type of numbers as the field goal is Reichard splitting the uprights again and a 27-0 lead. Well, while we're talking about postseason awards and postseason opportunities, how about the college football playoff? The top six released every Tuesday. This is as of November the 15th. Uh, nothing here surprised me, Coach. I know you and I differ a bit on who five and six are, maybe the order of two and three, but TCU's in a little bit of a battle right now with Baylor. Well, when I checked it at half, they were only they were up 14-14 at the time. Right now they're up 20-14, I believe. And Michigan, when I last looked at it, it was a 7-3 football game against Illinois, and they're 10-10. Now, here's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. sure people are going to throw darts at me. I had Michigan-Ohio State over that. And I'm taking this from a coach's perspective. I know. Because coaches get crazy. Michigan, Boy. first of all, hasn't lost. They beat Ohio State last year. Michigan has a better win against Penn State right now. That's why I have them there. And the first I... two out are, are teams that are conference champions at the second. I am going to respectfully disagree with some of your theories there momentarily. The return by Thomas from the nine across the 20 and stacked up at the 21 yard line. Now you're you're talking about last year and I understand Michigan had a terrific season last year, but they're not the same team and Ohio State's not the same team. I just think Ohio State, the schedule is better. They have been more consistent. Uh, we both agree on TCU. And then, look, I don't disagree with you on the first two out. I think we're all kind of throwing darts at a board. I think Tennessee, with their quality wins against Bama and LSU convincingly, that's why I've got them five. Southern Cal beat UCLA tonight, win the Pac-12 championship game, and we're going to have ourselves a good old-fashioned battle of one-loss teams who wins the beauty pageant. Now, but here's my rebuttal to you. Tennessee, okay, yep. who's having a phenomenal season, did not win their division. I know. Not only are I, they not going to win their division, they can't win the SEC. How can they be number five? The same way Alabama didn't win their division a few years ago, squeaked into the playoff, everybody complained. Alabama won the national championship. Everybody complained. The people who complained were the coaches. Because you got to go into the locker room, Mike. You got me fired up now, baby. You got to go into the locker room and tell your kids, hey, go win a championship, but it doesn't mean anything. It means everything to every other kid. And you don't win your... Now, keep in mind, I understand maybe, okay, you play for the SEC championship, but lost by a point or two. Right. Tennessee is not going to win the division. Keep this in mind. My final rebuttal. You're going to see them get rid of divisions in the SEC pretty soon. That's an almost certainty, which, which will make it a moot point. Who wins a division? Who doesn't win the division? It'll be the top two teams in the SEC championship game. I think a lot of people look forward to that. And number two, a lot of what we're talking about will be solved when the 12-team playoff is here, and that can't come soon enough for some of us. Point well made. I did have a flashback, though, when you said, here's my rebuttal. I thought about Saturday Night Live, you know, point <laughs> counterpoint here. <laughs> Hopefully... We didn't provide as many laughs, but some actual food for thought on both sides. And I appreciate, I think a lot of coaches think the way you think it, it with them, it's more nuts and bolts. Uh, everything is nuanced. I think it'll make for a, a robust and healthy debate here in the coming weeks. I know, that's why I just, I 
the people in the committee, I hope they could take have some empathy about the kids playing the game and say, hey, you go play for a championship, now you got a chance of playing for it. I know Nick Saban has a perspective on this. I know Lauren knows it very well. Take it away, Lauren. Yeah, we were actually talking during his radio show. There was a caller that called in asking what he thought about expanding the playoff to 12 teams. He said he didn't used to be for it, but now since we're trending in that direction, if you aren't in the playoffs, half your team doesn't want to play in a bowl game. So the importance of those bowl games really got diminished. So now he's been an advocate of having that bigger playoff because that's really where the fan interest is. Boy, that's an excellent point. I, I know if I really want to make coaches blood boil, I'll talk about players opting out of bowl games, which is a disturbing trend. A third and long screen set up, but swallowed up from behind. Jackson got tracked down by Jamirian Latham. Yeah, I mean, when you go to 12, I mean, who would want to play this Alabama team in a playoff? Like, if we had a 12-team playoff and Alabama gets in, do you think anybody wants to play Bryce Young and a, a team that lost two games against quality opponents by a combined four points? That's what we're looking at completely understand I, I truly completely understand and all those people out there are saying oh Alabama is having a down year they are two snaps away from being undefeated people. you know the knuckleball field goal that goes through yes. and then a really gutsy call by coach Kelly on the two-point conversion into the corner there it will be returned from the 21 and out to the 34. Exciting return by Kool-Aid McKinstry. And just to pick it up on our conversation where everything stands right now, take a look at the score going on right now with Michigan and Illinois. That is in the third quarter, and they're tied at 10, and TCU is on the ropes in Waco. It's hard to win, man. It's hard to win. So... I understand that. I hope Michigan's not looking ahead to Ohio State and then all my stand on the pedestal and beat my chest for Michigan is going to go right <laughs> out the window and that team in Columbus is going to jump right over my lap. We'll talk to our producer, Alex, and see if we can change your graphic before uh, the end of the broadcast if you want to flip-flop Michigan-Ohio State. On first down, trying to get to the edge now, turning it upfield. It's Roydale Williams. We've seen McClellan and Williams. We have not seen... Trey Sanders, Jonathan Bennett, you mentioned the, the freshmen are really high on Jamari and Miller. They love their freshman class. This freshman class in time, they believe will be another outstanding crop, plus what they have coming in for next season. And Mike, I agree with that. Watching practice, which I was so humbled and honored to be able to go Thursday's practice and watch how they operate and do things. But more importantly, there was a whole bunch of freshmen that jumped out at me. Young with time on second down, completes it. In plus territory, that's holding down to the 45-yard line. 17 yards and a first down. This young man holding. He's only caught about 29 passes coming into this football game. Here you see he sticks the foot in the ground, comes back to the quarterback, catches the football, locks it away, and gets a little yak yards after the play. Flared out to the near side across the 40 to the 36. That is Isaiah Bond, one of... Four true freshman receivers. He's the one Coach Bill O'Brien told us, keep an eye on number 17. He is going to be a great one. Out of Buford, Georgia. Second down and two now. Straight ahead run, a little wiggle for Roydale Williams. That'll likely be the final play of quarter number three. Dominated by Alabama, 10 to nothing. In route to a 27-0 lead, headed into the final 15 minutes from Tuscaloosa. Bryce Young says, okay, let's talk about it. Back to the sideline. That is the end of the third quarter. 27-0 our score from Tuscaloosa. It's okay to have some fun. Do a little dance. Enjoy yourself. Alabama's rolling. Well, if you had Bryce Young taking snaps in the fourth quarter on your bingo card, you're feeling awfully good right about now. I don't think many people would have expected it. 27 to nothing, not the score that a lot of people expected. And perhaps Nick Saban wants to see 
another successful drive capped off before we see perhaps Jalen Monroe or Ty Simpson in this fourth quarter. On first down from the pocket. Little flare out to the near side from the 35. Down the sideline, out of bounds near the 20. It's more of Roy Dell Williams, a gain of 14. Nice job there by Bryce again. Well covered on the back end in the coverage. Pockets very clean. Throws it to the check down. A lot of running room there for my man Williams. Young, handoff. Sticking the foot in the ground, reversing field. Roydale Williams, shifty. And a solid gain to set up a second down and short. I'm a little surprised, too, that Bryce is still in the football game. However, this is an opportunity for the, what our conversation in the first half of him wor help working on his chemistry with the receivers. And if Bryce has anything to do with it, he doesn't want to come out. He's the ultimate competitor. Point well made. On second and four, again, straight ahead handoff Williams. And it'll be third down and short. Bama five for five today in the red zone, although a couple of them have stalled and have settled for field goals. Kind of smiled at myself there, Michael. I'm talking about working on the chemistry of the uh, receivers. Get a couple extra reps here, and they just handed the ball off three straight times. Yeah, the hand three <laughs> handoffs. And Ja'Cory Brooks we haven't seen in a while. I don't think he's returning. Young 17 for 23, 211 yards, one touchdown, no picks. On a third down and two. Pass caught in the flat. Burton will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Jermaine Burton, who's had a big day, his second touchdown reception. This play here, Mike, was another one of those that, that Coach Saban was talking to us about how you can throw the ball and block downfield if he's one yard behind the line of scrimmage. And, and, and you know Stack, they, 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 they're one or two yards down the field. Well, they went in unbalanced there. They motioned him across the line of scrimmage, threw it to him behind the line of scrimmage, and that receiver's blocking downfield on the corner in the end zone, and he just walks on in. Reichert hammers home another extra point. Last three drives for Alabama. Touchdown field goal and this touchdown here. They take him in motion to the unbalanced side here. Little play fake. Throw it behind the line of scrimmage. He locks the way. As you see in the corner of the end zone, they're blocking. And it's right there, Katie by the door. our score here in Tuscaloosa. Mike Morgan, Dave Steckel, Lauren Sisler. Okay, don't ask me to explain the analytics that go into this, but when the computer spits out a number, you got to pay attention to it, right? Alabama still has a 15% chance, according to the playoff predictor, to make the college football playoff. Now, take that percentage for what it's worth, as the return is out to the 20 for Cam Thomas, the Birmingham native. But we have chaos, and if you're Alabama, you need absolute chaos to have a chance to get in. But right now, Michigan is losing. TCU is losing. I mean, you'd want Southern Cal to lose to UCLA. I'm just, just, just throwing it out there. Crazier things have happened. Odds are against it. But this is the kind of chaotic Saturday right now that you want if you're an Alabama fan. I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. A lot, of, lot two, two weeks left of the season. The one loss teams who are fighting for conference championships got to continue to win. But that is going to make chaos with TCU or Michigan going down. Oh, yeah. Nice catch and run there by McCray for a first down. He is... Got over a thousand yards receiving this year. Most talented weapon, number 10 in white. Coach Sampson, Lanier Sampson, man, he raved about this kid. I'm witnessing why. On video, he does not look explosive, as explosive as he is playing here today. He's caught nine touchdowns on the season. This will move the chains. Trey Goodman on a first down reception to midfield, a gain of 12. 
Trey Goodman, another receiver who's quick, has very good hands. You know what really shocked me, too, about this football team? The captains on the offense are both the receivers, Goodman and McCray. That's kind of impressive for that receiver room. Yeah, no doubt. This Austin P team came in leading the Atlantic Sun in points per game, yardage, and defensive yardage as well. They also average over 200 yards rushing, 200 yards passing a game, so they can beat you on the ground and in the air. Great tackle that time by Dallas Turner. He's had a big game from the linebacking spot. He's from Aquinas down there in Florida, and he is a long, good-looking football player. Young, sophomore. One-on-one -on -one and completely shadowed was DeCamba. Terion Arnold starting DBs still in the game for Alabama. At least one of them is. Yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas is a factory of high school talent that goes on to play D1. Several have gone out of the NFL, and several have played their college ball for Nick Saban in Alabama. Pretty Absolutely. good pipeline. It is. And George Smith was the longtime <laughs> matriarch of that program. Now he's the athletic director there. But they just keep pumping them out. And to the best of my knowledge, if I remember correctly, Jason Taylor was helping coach a little bit before he went over to Florida and That's right. coach. So it is a factory down there in Florida. Governors three for 11 on third down. Bama rushing four. Quick slant. Caught. It'll be a yard or two short. Stewart on the grab. Obvious four down territory the rest of the way for Austin P. Absolutely. Coaches, you know, he, he went through it on fourth down the last time when it was fourth and four and a half. Mm -hmm. He's going through it this way here. He wants to keep on going, man. His attitude is you don't say whoa in the middle of a horse race, you know it? <laughs> and again, the, the anxiety after this game is done will really build up for tomorrow when they will, as a unit, watch the selection show for the FCS playoffs, see if we're, they're one of the teams that gets in. Fourth down and short movement, pre-snap penalty. You see the coaches, the defensive coaches there. <laughs> I always chuckle because I used to be the same way. Coach Golding, Coach Saban, they're losing because of the discipline. Offside, defense, number 44, enter the neutral zone and make contact with an offensive player. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. That would not make Pete Golding very happy. And Again, Alabama leading the league in penalties. That's just so uncharacteristic of a Nick Saban team. They went on the double clap there. That young man did not watch the football and went off on the clap. You, you know one thing I love about Coach Saban? I think he's that old school guy that, that made that Coca-Cola commercial where he goes into halftime and he's losing his mind. And the one, you remember the commercial and the player looks at the other and goes, Coach, aren't we up 20, 34 to nothing? <laughs> But he keeps coaching. He never, keeps coaching. That's right. Never be content. Never be satisfied. And he'll be satisfied with this play. A beautiful twisting interception in the air by Brian Branch. The second one for Branch. Nice job. Belly rolling into the coverage. He high points the football, brings it in. They get another takeaway. And I'm going on record telling you, we brought the mojo for him. He sticks the ball up high. He comes in, see him belly roll back into the player. High points the football, locks it away. Take away. Forty yard attempt. This for the win against Alabama. It is up and it somehow got through. Chase McGrath wins the game for Tennessee. Here we go. Sprint out. Throw to the right. Caught. Mason Taylor. Tigers win. Tigers win. Alabama goes down. Well, that is a team that was favored to win the national title at the beginning of the year. Now find themselves outside looking in on the playoff. Well, you're five points away from 10-0. You just saw it. 52 to 49 against Tennessee, 32 31 overtime loss to LSU. If you're Alabama, the only team to appear in seven out of the eight playoffs, six and one in the semis, and of course, three national titles. It was thought that this might be the fourth. It's going to take a lot 
It's going to take a chaotic couple of weeks. So far, it's been a chaotic Saturday when you look at some of the scores around. Jalen Monroe. Jalen Monroe now in at quarterback, the redshirt freshman of Katy, Texas. Of course, he was the starter when they got banged up. And Bryce Young got hurt, hurt against Arkansas and missed the A&M game. It was Jalen Milroe who got the start. Great runner. We're talking to the coaching staff. They want him to operate more efficiently, get into his reads more precisely. Typical stuff, coach, that you want to see a young quarterback improve. Absolutely. I was actually a little shocked when I went to practice when I saw this young man. He's a physical specimen. I thought he was like a wide receiver, yeah. or a linebacker, or a safety. It's something else. The other thing we have, we have uh, Trey Sanders in the football game right now, too, at running back. And Sanders is actually a great story as the pass is complete. Boy, Burton, that's seven grabs over 120 yards and two touchdowns for Burton. So he has come along. The Alabama secondary, which only had three picks all year, you got the one from Branch, the one from Kool-Aid, so two interceptions nearly matches the total all year. They have come alive, and this team has come alive in the second half. They have, and they also got the fumble recovery. That's right. So I'm taking credit that you and I brought the mojo for Coach <laughs> Saban to get those takeaways there you rolling. Go. Hand off to the left side. That is the talented freshman, Jamirion Miller. Lauren Sisler, what do you have? Yeah, there's Bryce Young there, all smiles right now. And, you know, Alabama up 34 nothing going to the fourth quarter. Nick Saban walked over to him. They had a friendly exchange. You see Nick Saban light up a little bit there with a smile on his face. The job is done for his starting quarterback, so let's, let's move on from that. You know, I asked Coach Saban on his radio show about Bryce Young's development. A year after winning the Heisman, he said the leadership from him has been tremendous. Great run that time by Milro. Go ahead, Lauren. And for a guy that wasn't always the vocal one in the room, Saban said it didn't come natural for him, but he's really stepped up and taken that responsibility, pushing guys around him to be better and to play more consistently. And you know where we really saw that show up was last week yeah. when they got behind against Ole Miss. Bryce had that entire offense huddled up on the sideline, pushing him to play better, to play at the level they're capable of. That's a great point. In fact, his teammates told us he was the most vocal guy. It's the most vocal they've ever seen. Bryce Young, they did not want to lose that game last week in Oxford. The difference in the overall vibe of this team, if you lose that game, it's your third loss of the year, you lose to Lane Kiffin of all people, that just would not have sat well. They come from behind, down 10, they win the game, still a lot to play for. And again, Bryce Young's leadership was as good as his play. With a second down and three. Milrell will keep it. Now with Alabama about to salt this one away, you start thinking about the Iron Bowl. And it's one of the most entertaining games every year. How about last year? Quadruple overtime. And boy, was Bryce Young calm, cool, and collected. That clinched the Heisman for a lot of voters such as myself. Carnell Williams, of course, is now the head coach the interim head coach for the Auburn Tigers coming off his first career win. He knows a thing or two about that rivalry as a former player. It's always fun, Coach. You know about rivalries during your time, no matter where you were at, what stint you were at. And it doesn't get any better than the Iron Bowl. There, there are rivalries at every level of football. They're special. They're dynamic. And I've never been any, anything part of Alabama and Auburn with that rivalry. I've got to watch it on TV. But, but uh, Coach Williams, okay, mm -hmm. if he can coach them up like he can play back in the day, they're going to have their hands full. We know one thing. He's given them plenty of juice. Uh, he, he's got everybody excited right now when Auburn could have mailed it in. Oh, Milrow going to the air to the end zone. Incomplete. Broken up at the last second by Simmons intended for Kendrick Law. Kendrick Law is another one of those young guys that Coach O'Brien talked about. Coming up, he's got to take that ball and get it back into his body quickly before they get the strip that came out from Simeon's there on that play. Been impressed by Shamari Simmons today. He's made a number of plays in the secondary. That young man, he can run, he can hit, he can he tackles well. He does a nice job in his man-to-man -man skills. He might have a future going down the road here. Tenth play of the drive. It'll be a third down and long. Here comes the blitz. Milrow. Still has time, flushed out, 
Now directing traffic, goes deep and picked off. That's the kind of play that Jalen Milrow is going to have to work on if he's going to be the starter next year. Interception by Doss, third turnover on Bama. Comes down, he's scrambling out of the pocket. Here's a, here's a situation where you want to tuck the ball, run the ball, and make a profit. This game has had a lot of significance over the last few years. Certainly, you know, no different this year. And the state of Alabama is Clemson. Holy cow! Auburn has won the Iron Bowl! Uh, it doesn't get better to Auburn, Alabama. We cap off the regular season every year. One of the best rivalries in all of sports. Auburn, Alabama will take place here at Brian Denny one week from today. For Alabama, it'll be a chance to have another 10-win season, and who knows after that for Auburn. Don't talk about nothing to lose. You go into that game, got an interim coach. Postseason, not a real factor for the Tigers. You just come in here and say, this is our Super Bowl. This is the one. And Laura knows a thing or two about that matchup, covering it throughout the years. Yeah, I've been fortunate to be here in the state of Alabama since 2011, so over the decade mark, and just being a part of so many of those Iron Bowl games, the rivalry just runs so deep, and really coming into this matchup, you said it there, yes, the Auburn Tigers, they were coming off a five-game losing streak, really had nothing to, to lose, nothing to gain. They get a win against Texas A&M with Carnell, and I really think that's a football team that's going to come in here next week and play with a lot of heart. They will give Alabama their best football, their best run, and I think Alabama will do the same. It's, it's a game that you literally wipe the slates clean, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it, it's just it's a unique rivalry that is unlike any anything else I've ever been a part of. Now, we've learned Defense. the lesson several times. The better team does Defense. not always win that game. Unlike a lot of rivalries Defense. where it's chalk, there's been a number of upsets Defense. in the Iron Bowl. Coach, I know you're excited because you've been raving about 32. Deontay Lawson, you think he's going to be a dude. The coaches think he's going to be a dude. He almost had a pick six. He almost had that pick six. He got to look the ball into his hands. I absolutely love this young man. His change of direction. Coach says he's going to be a super leader next year on the football team. He can play in the box. He can play in space. And he had a pick six. A linebacker's dream there. Your, your eyes, when you talk about Deontay Lawson, reminds me when I was a kid and I knew there was a Nintendo under the Christmas tree. It was just that type of pure exuberance. Well, I don't, I, I, Nintendo's way over my head, dude. <laughs> Technology is not my game. You could ask my darling wife. You're more of a Commodore 64 guy. I, I am, man. Uh uh, Coach, I, I was hoping that you were going to know about the Nintendo, and I'm sad to know that do you not even know about Tech Mobile. Come on, man. That's Bo where Jackson I getting it done on yes. Tech Mobile. Now, now Boy, I'm that's where I learned all my coaching. Because here's the really beautiful thing about Tech Mobile. You only have eight plays to choose from, Coach, so I felt like I was Vince Lombardi in that game. Okay. I can handle it. All right, you young pups. I'll tell you what. I'm going to flash you guys back because I was the pinball wizard, oh. and I had the old electric football game, oh, man. Oh, yes. Come on now. <laughs> He's not afraid to use an abacus. He is Coach Dave Steckel, Mike Morgan, with <laughs> Lauren Sissler, and Coach is heartbroken when Deontay Lawson Lock dropped it away, a pick six. Deontay. Well, the college football playoff rankings going as follows, and everybody is keeping an eye out on Michigan, Illinois, and what's going down in Waco. What's going down in Waco is TCU had a chance to tie it moments ago with a two-point conversion. They failed on the conversion. So right now, they are in jeopardy of losing. Two minutes remaining in that game. Michigan in danger of losing to Illinois. Coach Brett Bielema, former Arkansas Razorback head coach, former Wisconsin head coach, doing a terrific job this year in Champaign. There's eight minutes left to go in that game. Michigan's got the ball, but they're all American running back. Blake Corum is banged up and, from what we're told, not returning. As Alabama goes to the ground game with Miller. Not the name drop. Coach Bielema and I... We're good friends. We go way back being uh -huh. defensive guys. You know, that was sure. coming up and stuff. 
And, and he has really done a remarkable job everywhere he's been. Yeah. Everywhere he's been, he's done a remarkable uh, You know, job. I I thought he'd be a great fit at Arkansas, and they had success early on. They could never find a defense in Fayetteville, but I, I just think the guy can still flat out coach, and that's a great pickup for a, a program that had really been in, been on hard times in Champaign. That'll be a first down for Miller. Yeah, they hired Ryan Walters, who might be a name being mentioned in the Colorado job because he's a Colorado alum. Ryan's his defensive coordinator, right. and he's gone over there, and in two years, it's really made an impact. What, what is it like for you coaches this time of year? Because a, a lot of you are worried about your future. If, if it's a bad year and you're on the hot seat, whether you're an assistant or a head coach, you're, you're worried about that. If you're really having a ton of success, you might be, uh, let's just say, feeling out other opportunities. So uh, here we are. It's late November. What's it like being either an assistant or a head coach? Well, I'm the probably the uh, exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. my, my theory was that, you know, honestly, the good Lord is going to take care of what you have. Time out on the field for a player injury. And it was my responsibility as a coach. The man down. That is Sedarius Doss, who's actually made a number of key plays in the secondary for Austin P today. And good sign there as he's turning over on his back and is going to be able to get up and walk off. Good sign there for Sedarius Doss. We'll take another look. Doss has four tackles for loss, by the way, in this game. I missed the contact there. He was standing there around the pile and it looked like a little bit of it was friendly fire there. I'm not sure if it was his shoulder or his neck. He's smiling over there, so that's, that's a, a good sign. That's a definite good sign. But it, what about the coaches who know that they're on the hot seat this time of year? I mean, how do you how do you handle that? I know that wasn't a thing that you had to handle a whole lot, but every coach goes through it at least once or twice. Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the old saying, there's two types of coaches. Those have been fired and those are going to get fired, <laughs> right, you know, right. and, and this happened in my career when the, and I, but I'll know this like oh, I was at uh, Rutgers. We got to let go with a couple games left in the season and I purposely turned my desk around because what happens is these coaches, there's a whole lot of closed doors going on because yeah. they're worried about their future. Sure. And you know what? A long time ago, I really thought about having to be, you know, make a significance in these kids lives. So I got time to look for a job, yeah. okay? And, and I wanted to take care of the players. I know I'm throwing eye out there a lot, but you have to take care of the program, and that's your integrity, and then something good's going to happen down the road. It's Ty Simpson in at quarterback and gives us an excuse to talk about the freshmen out of Martin, Tennessee. They are very enamored with Ty Simpson. He is the son of a coach, the son of Jason Simpson, the head coach of UT Martin. They love his arm. They love his smarts, his feel for the game, his poise. There's going to be a legit battle for who's going to replace Bryce Young next year, and Ty Simpson certainly will be in the thick of it. No questions asked on that one. We, when we asked Coach O'Brien about that, did you see that smile he put on his face mm -hmm. yesterday? And I know from my perspective, I love coaches' kids because they're little gym rats. They're always around the coach. They're at the football field. You know, my son's a football coach. My grandson goes to practice with him all the time. He's running around that football field and stuff. And they learn the game early on, you know, when you're sitting on that lap watching the video. That was Saunders, excuse me, Trey Sanders on that last carry who actually played for Cadillac Williams at the IMG Academy in Florida. And Cadillac was the running backs coach a few years ago. Boy, has that changed in a hurry. We're learning a lot about the backups for Alabama on this drive, which will be eight plays long after this third and three. Hand off the dive and a run by Miller. Well, Stack, first up, it's been a pleasure working with you today. Some final thoughts. Timeout. Austin P. Their first of the half. 30 seconds in length. So, some final thoughts on what we saw today. At times, it was a little bit sloppy for Alabama with the turnovers, but the Crimson Tide and their talent certainly prevail. What does this game mean looking forward to Please next week's Iron Bowl? Seconds. And a verse beyond that. 
It's always better to prepare for a game when you win a football game. There's no questions asked about that. And what I think happened today was the one positive sign that Coach Saban's going to be, I hope, feel really good about is the turnovers. They got three today. And he talked about that. We talked about that with him in there. He was passionate about that. The other thing, and my memory's not perfect, perfect on this one, but I think they only had three or four penalties. You know, they, they were averaging unbelievable amount of penalties before in the football game. So those are two things that he improved in. You know, you get three turnovers, four penalties. Those are the things that I think make you really feel good going into a rivalry game in the Iron Bowl. On the other side, I do, they're getting shut out, but I like the moxie, I like the attack by Austin Pay, and I really hope that they get a bid to the FCS playoffs. A fourth and two for Simpson, puts it right on target. That's another young man they're high on, Emmanuel Henderson, who had, for a time was considered the number one athlete in the country at a high school. He has got through a couple of different positions. They like him at the wide receiver spot, and he'll be certainly big in the plans down the road. Did you, you still see that pass that tie through? Yeah. I mean, that was accurate. It spun well. I can see why Coach O'Brien had a big old smile on his face. Arm talent could be the final play of the game. And you don't have to take another snap if you're Alabama. And the Crimson Tide are going to improve to 9-2 on the year with a matchup with in-state Auburn next week in the Iron Bowl. Bryce Young adds another couple of touchdown passes today. The defense pitches another shutout. And Alabama Fresh off that come from behind win against Ole Miss. Didn't have to sweat it out as much this week, but will gladly take another victory. 34 to nothing, your final score. Coach, some final thoughts quickly. My thought real quick is I like to fight in Austin Pay, and I tell you what, I like how Alabama responded in the second half, and now they can build on going to the next game. Coach, pleasure working with you, with Lawrence Sisler and our entire SCC Network crew. This is Mike Morgan saying so long from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. 34 to nothing, your final score. So long, everybody.